So we're going to keep brothers in the house of the Bible, even more sincerely and faithfully, continually fighting the good fight of faith, Lord willing, we are all found in a number to be delivered. But until then, in the meantime, in between time, we're going to come out and prophesy and just do the work of God, watch me out shine, that we may fulfill his will, all right? So we're going to just combine two camps today. Um, we're just going to go through the spirit. If your brothers got anything you want to bring out, feel free to bring it out. And uh, let's just let's, let's do it. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Right, and this is the time right now that that's the only thing we really should be talking about, man, is the prophecies, the words of the Lord, man, and the things that are now transpiring in the world right now. It's getting hot and heavy out here, and shit is about to go down. A lot of you people don't believe it. A lot of people don't feel it. But we have the hope for the elect, man, and many other men out there, we feel and, 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 and taste this thing, man. She's about to jump off. You saw us about to make that move, man. And the Lord is going to give him the authority to do so. So this is why it's very important to speak the words of prophecy right now, right? All that little squirmish and small little bullshit that, you know, people be getting into, push that shit aside, man. We want to get the hell out of here, man. We want to give that diligence to make our calling and election sure that that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai may look down and say, We've been found worthy, man. So we're going to continue to speak the words of prophecy because prophecy is what's prevalent right now. Go ahead. And cause them to be written in paper for the faithful and true. Right. The word said, my, my word will never go out void. And these and these prophecies and these words and these scriptures are faithful and true. And this is why we believe so hard, wholeheartedly. Okay? With our faith. All right? We, we truly have faith that the Lord is going to come down, wrap them clouds, as people like to laugh about, wrap them clouds and come down, destroy our enemies, and deliver us up from the set destruction of this place known as Babylon the Great, man. These are the times that we're living in. You know, it's, a, it's fun and games until somebody gets fucking hurt. And the Lord's going to start hurting people out here, man. Little do you believe, all right? Let's roll it. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. That's right. speak against you. Right, a lot of those people who don't believe, they try to persuade you that what we're, what you're saying is not true just because they don't believe. They try to get you to believe what they believe. We don't give a goddamn what you think, man. The scripture says, let the most high be true and every man a liar, man. That's why we come out of the scriptures. You got that? Yeah, got it. Uh, Romans <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 3. Yep. For what is something not believe? Right. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the most high without effect? Yep. The most high forbid. Yeah, let the most high be true, but every man a liar, as it is written. That's right, as it is written. Right? If we come out and we speak the words of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. We don't come out of our own back pocket. And this is why when you see a lot of people come up and give the they want to tell you, put the Bible away. No, what do you believe? What do you think? It's not what we believe. Okay? Our feelings and our beliefs, our feelings and our thoughts, rather, are just vain. We believe in the scriptures and what the scripture says. All right? Go ahead. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. And once again, when you read 2nd Ezra 8 and the 50th chapter, once again, a lot of people are going to die out here, man. A lot of people are going to fall by the sword. A lot of people are going to fall to these calamities that are coming, to these pestilence that are coming, all right? To the, to the trouble that our enemies are going to bring upon us. You want folks want to laugh and joke and giggle? The time is up, man. Go ahead. Now, 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 this is an article from the New York Times. From the New York Times, and, and he's going to tell you what's happening in China right now as we speak. And he said the headline said this: "Just bread and noodles." China COVID lockdown distress hit Xinjiang with lack of food, medicine, and other crucial supplies. Resident of Yanning are now shopping under a month-long pandemic shutdown. That Matthew first chapter, uh, twenty-four chapter, speaks about famine. Real quick, you see, you people thought the Lord was fucking joking when he said when he said famine. Man. You thought the Lord was kidding. It's already it's already taking form, man. It's already taking place. All these storehouses, the prices are going through the goddamn roof. You know, shit is on back order for who knows how long. They, they ain't even getting shit in some of these store, these supermarkets, man. Especially with that conflict in the Ukraine, the, the yeah, bread basket right, of the world, the right. grain shortage. Yeah, listen, man, listen. People gonna be eating fucking rocks and fucking sticks pretty soon, man. And your own children. You got that real quick? Yeah, read that. Watch the point. Right to the point. All right, so, Acts 24, I start at verse 6. It says, and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. see, the, see ye be not troubled, 
for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right, and these things are coming to pass. Because every day you turn on the BBC, the RT News, the different media outlets with these, these foreign countries, man. They're all gearing up and they're ready for war, man. They're putting their pieces of the puzzle all in the right place in the spirit of the Lord, and they're ready to war. So now you're hearing wars and rumors of war. It's not going to be much more of a rumor pretty soon, man. Go ahead. Verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom, mm -hmm. and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquake in diverse places. And this is how a lot of you people are going to fall to that famine and that pestilence and even those, those, those natural disasters by the Lord. All right, but point being, what the brother just read the article concerning that famine. All right, there's going to be a, a hell hole of famine in this country, in this very country where you stand and you so-called believe in, and you want to, you know, put your heart over the fucking your your hand over your heart and say you, you pledge to the, the elites of this place, man. This place is about to fall, man. Yeah, go ahead with the article. And he says, and he says, this summer, Yangning, a city in the Shenzhen region of far western China. Um, south of the boom of Chinese terrorists seeking a sunny west street with spite from COVID worries in their hometown. Now Yang Ning is under his own grueling week-long pandemic lockdown with residents calling for help over limited food, difficulty getting medicine, and drastic shortage of sanitary care for women. And you know, you know the crazy thing is? These devils were restricted to having so many kids per household. Can you imagine when that shit hits here in America? You got families of six, seven, eight kids running around the joint. That EBT, that food stamp shit's gonna be out of here real soon. Go ahead. And he says, people in the city of 600,000 have been committed to stay in their home since early August, forcing many to rely largely on neighborhood officials to deliver supplies. Right, and those, and those supplies are gonna stop. All that shit's gonna come to an abrupt halt. And he says, one resident contacted by telephone said that he received food every five days, but there was little of nutri nu nutritional value, no food, no vegetable, or meat. That's right. You see that? It's going to be the same thing happening in this country, man. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not. Now, this brother got something. Then we'll come right. Hey, you know what? We ain't going to hold back. Just off, man. <laughs> Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 46. Yeah. And thou Asia that are a partaker in the hope of Babylon mm -hmm. and are the glory of a person, mm -hmm. woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Right. Thou hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, mm -hmm. that they may please the glory in mm -hmm. thy lovers, which have always desired to commit whoredoms with thee. That's right. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will send plagues upon thee. That's right. Widowhood, poverty, famine, the sword, pestilence, to waste thy houses with destruction and death. Mm. And the mm. glory of the power shall be dried up as a flower when the heat that riseth and sit over thee. Mm -hmm. you, you, listen, these nations that have joined league with, the, with Babylon the great man, they're going to suffer a horrible fate just like Babylon the Great, man. You know, they've drank it of the wine of her fornication, did they not? All right? Widowhood. Even even the book of Second Ezra tells you, was it, um, yeah, Second Ezra tells you that there's going to be a, 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 a war, there's going to be a draft, they're going to send these devils across these seas, and they're not coming back home, man. So that, 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 uh, that stem of widowhood is going to be on the rise over here in Babylon. You don't see you don't see these Edomites charging to these these recruitment centers like you did down. What what is it? 9/11, right? It's 9/11. Where they at? Where they at? You don't see no one charging to the recruitment service saying we want to go over there and remember to and, 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 and hold the fort down. It's, it's, it's all bullshit, man. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 33. The virgins shall mourn having no bridegroom. Why are they gonna mourn having no bridegroom? Because they're gonna get sent over into that war. As the scripture's gonna tell you. They're gonna get sent over there and they're gonna die over there, man. Their bodies are gonna be left out on, on the on the on the playing field, if you will, on the battlefield, if you will. And you poor mothers are gonna be like, my son, no one's there. He died by himself. No one's there to bury him. Because they're gonna start showing these aerial pictures. They're gonna start showing pictures of United States soldiers all strewn about, talking about what a travesty this is. We need to go over there and do something. 
You ain't going over there because any American that goes over there is going to be put to death, man. Because the war, war is real, man. The war is real. And everybody's fed up with this place and fed up with this democracy and fed up with its rules and regulations. Go ahead. The virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The woman shall mourn having no husbands. Mm -hmm. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. And the war shall their, their bridegrooms be destroyed and the husband shall perish of famine. In the wars, their bridegroom shall be destroyed. All right? So that's what's coming, man. The third world war, though it is already in motion, but once they start making it a hot war, not a cold war, then you're gonna start seeing this shit, man. You're gonna start seeing these guys who are slated to go overseas. They're gonna be trying to flee to Canada, flee to Mexico. Little do they know that treaty that America has with Canada and Mexico during the wartime, man. They ain't gonna be going nowhere but overseas, man. And a lot of you people are gonna re, re enlist because you're gonna find out that's gonna be the only way you can survive and feed your family by re enlisting, taking the taking the MOTB and going overseas. Like you're gonna do something over there. You're gonna do something. You're gonna be fertilized over there, man. That's right. You're gonna be fertilized. That's what you're gonna be. Go ahead. Uh, second Ezra, <clears throat> chapter eight, verse fifty. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. Right, and the thing about America is, America, it doesn't let you see what's happening in the latter time. They shield you from that. They treat you like a child that 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 is in, you know, in a system where you don't want to expose them to the violence. So the American people are going to suffer it the worst because when it lands on your doorstep, you're really going to have a hard time dealing with this shit, man. All these other nations, they're telling their people, listen, it's, 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 it's on and popping. Be ready to be, be ready to see bodies laying around through the streets. Be ready for blood to be splattered all over the place. They're telling their people over there, man. Even over in, in Russia and Ukraine, what's going on over there? You ain't walking out of the house without being prepared to see a dead body on the street. Go ahead. Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Right, why is it Why is it called the virgin daughter of Babylon? America has never been touched, man. America is so much, you would say, pure compared to these other countries, man. These other countries have war, has bloodshed, has all types of shit going on. But America, once again, the American people are shielded from that, man. They shield you from seeing what's really going on in the world. This is why this place is the most wickedest and most treacherous on the planet. I'd rather know what the hell I'm facing than to walk through blind, walk into a, a situation blind. All right? And when they start knocking these truckers off, they start dropping that stock market drops off the bottom. When all these things start to happen, then you're going to see. And then you're going to ask yourself, what do we do? Where are those guys at from the highways and byways that was teaching the word, that was telling us we need to be ready, we need to prepare ourselves? We're going to be long gone, Lord willing. We're going to be long gone, man. Now you're gonna fight for yourself and fit for yourself. Hold that ripple, let him finish off. Go ahead. No, I wanna hear you, right? Give me a second, give me a second. Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Right. Sit on the ground, there's no more throne. Right, there's no of the more throne. Kaldeans. Right, hold on. There's no more throne. Mm -hmm. This place has been the, uh, the throne throughout the whole world, man. America has been that golden cup throughout the whole world. Everybody always seeks to America when there's a, when there's a disaster somewhere in, in, in other parts of the world. America has to give the most money out of all these countries on the planet. America's always been there to, to, to see to see the, to see it through with the cape on. That's what America's been born to do. And this is why all this shit that's going on in the world, it all is based off of this place known as Babylon the Great. Go ahead. It says, for thou shall no Come more on, be. Yo, called. Watch your backs, brother. Watch your backs. Let's just let this cat go. Yeah, So it says, uh, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Mm -hmm. Right, America's no going to be called tender and delicate. And that's what and that's what a lady is. You know, a lady's tender and delicate. And they, America is that woman. Is that woman that sit upon the beast, right? Women are known to be tender and delicate. Nice, clean, smelling good, shaved, soft skin, you know? But this place is about to become an old hag, man. An old rusty hag that is slated for the ground, the grave. All right, edit on that? That's it. Um, you got an audible? Oh, yeah. 
be charged with these crimes in 2023. Well, hold on, what are we reading from? Um, the article as so. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, just get to the Okay, let's get supposed to look it up. Uh, and the uh, noise won't detain you. Uh, uh, be charged with these crimes in 2023. Oh, the heading, the headline. Right, so yeah, the headline. Be charged with these crimes in 2023, and Illinois won't detain you. Okay, so I see what you're getting at. So what the brother's about to read is an article where they're going to start letting people out of prison, man. Oh, yeah, they're going to start yeah, letting yeah. people out of prison. I've seen so in other words, what, right, so when you get out there in the streets, you can commit all these, these heinous crimes, whatever you want to do, and they're going to charge you. They're not going to charge you. Go ahead, read that, brother. Aggravated battery. Go ahead. Aggravated DUI. Go ahead. Aggravated fleeing. Go ahead. Arson. Go ahead. Burglary. Go ahead. Drug induced homicide. Intimidation. Go ahead. Kidnapping. Robbery. Okay. So, All right. Excuse me. They're going to charge you, but they won't detain you. All right. But what comes to mind when you think of this, when you hear this? The purge. The purge comes to mind when you hear this. Yep. All right, so it's all hell is about to really break loose. We've been saying it and saying it and saying it, just like our forefather Noah, when he was on the scene, right? When Noah was on the scene, he was preaching for over 100 years that the sky was gonna open up and the world was gonna be flooded and the whole shit, right? Nobody believed Noah, because at that time, it had never rained before. The clouds have never, as the scriptures say, the windows of heaven have never opened up. The earth was always watered from the dew from beneath, right? Yep. So Noah was out there doing his thing, likewise, the, the descendants, we're out here doing our thing from the head of apostles on down and very many various other brothers who are doing their thing out here. And nobody believes us. Nobody, you see devil coming here? Watch out for these devils, man. Nobody believes our report until that, until that dreadful day comes when the Lord swoops down like a thief in the night to take all y'all out, to right. wipe you out. Right. Okay? But before he does that, he's going to have a little fun with you. He's gonna make you suffer. He's gonna put you through pain. He's gonna put you through all types of hell. He's gonna watch you. He's gonna let you see your children die right in front of your very eyes, man. These are these awful things that the world's gonna do. That's why it's known as El Al Alasaji. The terrible ones, man. He's gonna do these things. And you best believe these words are faithful and true. He said, My word will never go out for you. So the things that are gonna come to pass that we're reading about are going to happen. As a brother read in 2nd Ezra 8 and 50. For many great miseries is going to come upon them that in the latter time are on the earth, man. Many great miseries. There's no other way around trying to explain that. The word misery in itself is a, is a word that you can clearly understand is a bad situation. All right. All right. All right. We're going to come here. Go ahead. This is Ezekiel 7. Oh, you finish? Oh, no. yeah, Second finish degree yeah. murder. Yeah, hold on, Second degree murder. It's a threat of public official. Threatening the public official. Yeah, that scripture says you shall not regard their king kings and other princes. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, that's yeah, so that hey, but but that's not that's nothing new. They're gonna let these people out the jailhouses anyway, man. It's just a matter of time. But they're gonna probably chip a lot of you devils before they let you out of there. They're gonna be able to track you. They're gonna see where you're going, what kind of activities you're doing. This is a game. Matter of fact, on the very day which we're speaking now, the elites, they were all in that region, man, looking at what was happening, getting the lowdown up front and center, man. Don't let them fool you. Them devils are all over the place. They all knew what was going down. And likewise, the times that we're coming in, they know what's going down because they're the one that's sanctioning. The Lord's putting the spirit on them to sanction all this shit, all these troubles that are coming upon the earth, man. Go ahead. Ezekiel 7 and 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord Yahweh unto the land of Israel, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Right, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the earth. Now, primarily the end of Esau's world, okay? Because they're in charge right now. They're in control of the whole world. And as we slowly see their, their power structure and their infrastructure and their power struggle, we can slowly see it diminishing, man. It's coming to an end. They don't have that pump or that, that pride or that strength that they used to have back in the, you know, 60s and 70s and 80s coming up, man. That shit is out the window, man. Go ahead. Verse 3. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send my anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Right. I'm going to say he's going to judge you according to your ways. Well, what have you been doing? Pure wickedness especially to the nation of Israel. 
the rape, the robbery, the murder, the slaying, the castrating, the dismembering, all these things that you've done to the Lord's people, he's going to do unto you in double. All right? So he's going to deal with you according to your ways. You've been a very wicked na nation of people, man. As the scriptures say, the most treacherous. Mm -hmm. So the Lord's going to deal with you treacherously, man. Go ahead. Right. Verse 4. And my eyes shall not spare, spare thee, neither will I have pity. Right. But I'll, right. He's not gonna, the Lord's not going to have pity because you didn't have pity on us. You, didn't have, you don't have pity on anybody, including your own goddamn people. This is all a game to you right now. But you underestimate the Heavenly Father and His Son and His servants, man. You underestimate the power that the Lord possesses. So, that Lord, so the Lord that possesses this power is also the Lord that's putting the Spirit in us to come out and tell you about yourself. As the scriptures say, before the face of them who have afflicted us. Go ahead. It says, well, continue on. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. That's right. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, and evil and only evil, behold, is come. That's right. And end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. That's right. So that time is here, man. We're in that time where the end is now made. We can see the vision of the end, man. That's right. You know, we read about John the Revelator when he saw that lake of fire. We understand what that means. That we understand. So. You got people out here talking about the lake of fire is a place where people are going to burn forever in torment. We asked one cat, well, what does that mean? That means they're going to be walking around just burning up. Going down and they're going to be greeting each other in torment. Yo, what's going on, man? Nah, I'm just burning up, man. What's up with you? I'm burning too, bro. That's the that's the mentality that they've been they've been conditioned to have about this hell doctrine, about this this place of of, of purgatory. It's all bullshit, man. All right, where we at? I got I got proof. Said it on that? No, I got something. All right, go ahead. Now this is James chapter two, verse thirteen. He says, "For he should have judgment without oh, mercy, mercy that shows no mercy." Right? Who have shown no mercy? He saw Edom. They've shown no mercy. And, and I'll say this, they've showed mercy to the Japanese and Chinese. They've given them positions in this world. They've, they've given them the, you know, reparations. They, they brought them back from the, the, the brink of destruction and let them come over here and open up all kinds of shops and, and boutiques and, and jewelry stores. I mean, I know there's so much so that if, if, if another nation goes to uh, uh, does some dirt to one of these other heathen nations, that nation needs to repay because you got these Germans repaying back to uh, Poland, right. Uh, right? What they did for World War II, yep, yep. Uh, repaying back to um, many of the other nations that the, uh, you know Germany invaded. They they uh, they gotta give money back, man. Right? Yeah, the yep. cars are up. Yep. 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 took it ran with that shit, yep. boy. And the whole world fell for it. The whole world fell for it. Till one day we woke up, the Lord woke us up, and now we know who's who in this thing, man. Yep. All right, go ahead. You have one on deck? Yes. This is uh. Ezekiel 25 and 13, it says, that, uh, Therefore thus said the Lord thy power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. I will cut off man and beast from it, and I will also make it desolate for right. Teman right. and they of the time. Right, and this is that modern day Edom right here. This is, that, this is modern day Edom. You're going to cut it off and make it desolate. How is it going to be made desolate? By the fulfillment of the mystery, man. That destruction is going to make this place most desolate. Ain't nobody going to dwell over here. Ain't nobody going to come back over here to, to set up shop. Them Europeans ain't going to be sailing over here and trying to come over here and establish another colony. You know? so, ain't nothing going down without our authority. There's nothing going down without our authorization. Man. So if you want to sail somewhere, it's going to be to get some, some supplies for, for whatever and get your ass back in the house, goddammit. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't gonna be let loose. We ain't letting you run loose like you ran and ran loose throughout the whole four corners of the earth, man. Esau has done just that. He's ran wild throughout the four corners of the earth, creating all kinds of havoc. And look what we got today, man. Look what, look at the condition of the world today. Because this devil's running wild, man. Go ahead. It's a number 35, verse 33 and 34. He says, so, so, so ye shall not pollute the land where and ye are. Wow. You should not pollute the land and where you are. Right. And this is and this is and this is the most polluted place on the planet Earth, man. Good. For blood it defiled the land, mm -hmm. and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, 
but by the blood of him that shed it. Yep, yep. That's a little doubt. Now, in order for this place to be made whole, and everybody made whole, the people who shed blood, their blood got to be shed over here, man. It has to be that way. And their blood's going to be shed over here. We're going to see, Lord willing, we're going to see their blood be shed over here by the thermonuclear missiles and all that destruction that the Lord's going to send upon this place. Right? Because don't, 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 don't think that it's just going to be the nuclear missiles. The Lord's going to send them chariots over here. They're going to be blasting shit up. Everybody's just, it's going to be on, man. <laughs> It's going to be on over here. All right, you got a piece of over here? Yeah, mentioned something. Right, right here in the scripture. This is uh, Isaiah 14 and 21. It says, uh, Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise up. I'm sorry, no, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, mm -hmm. nor fill the face of the world with cities. That's right. That's right. And, there, and this is, look, look at over here. You see these statues over here? This is exactly what they've done. They filled the world with their faces. We got Mount Rushmore. We got you know all these little statues and symbols, symbols of their faces all over the place. Textbooks, monuments, everywhere you go, you see an Edomite standing over you, looking down on you with those fixed eyes. Cesare Borgia over in Brazil. He's over the whole. He's over Brazil like this. You know, kneel before me, and, and them see. Brazilians felt right for that shit, man. Yeah. Kneel before us. Yeah. 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 You know, that's that's they felt right for it, man. Go, go over to Brazil and say that's a, a, a crack up on that hill, man. You better, you better be ready to do some Brazilian jiu-jitsu over there. You ain't coming out there. You ain't coming out there the same way you went in. They ain't shit. They gonna try to put it on you. I remember. I, listen, I don't know if y'all remember. Years ago, I was out there this time out in New York. Years ago. Pope was in town. This big Italian dude, man, that was getting on him. He was, this, he was ready to put his life on the line for the Pope. Oh, crip your fucking ass! Big dude. And you know, that was, watch your back, brother. Bring it in tight. They got that, they got them right. horses on there. Bring it in tight. Bring it in real tight. Give him, give him plenty of room. Give him plenty of room. That dude cracked me up right here. <laughs> he cracked me up. <laughs> I think that's Elon, man. Elon? 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 And these popes are the worst ones on the goddamn planet, man. They're the, they're the most wanted pedophiles on the planet, man. All right? So where were we at? That's some real quick. Yeah, well, guy, uh, well, yeah. ended up, he ended up resigning from, from the position. But uh, this guy, Joseph Ratzinger. Oh, yeah, 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 was, yeah. Uh, he, he, he resigned from being pope, right? He, 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 was, he was probably one of the few popes who, who ended his tenure as pope before his death. Because usually they're in there until they die. Then they put somebody else in there. So he was one of the few that ended his, uh, his term as Pope uh, before his death. But uh, what he was responsible for before he became Pope was relo relocating church fathers who had been uh, accused of molestation. Yep. Yep. Go go on, go go and look up Joseph Ratzinger. Yep. Look at that. He's a true devil, man. Yep. Look at that devil's face, man. He looks like a true, true, true like a true Satanist. Got that look like that joker look where they get a little bit of eyes and that look check him out man that's a real quick just real quick yeah yeah let me get that real uh, quick ecclesiastes uh 10 verse 7 i have seen servants upon horses that's and right. princes walking as servants upon the earth right and it's going to continue to be that way until we get the hell out of here man we ain't never going to be in no position of authority here in babylon we're not going to be in even even if they did decide to put a so-called negro a true negro in, in a, a place of power, he ain't gonna have no power, really. Nope. He ain't gonna have no power. He's gonna be a, a, a figure face, that's all. Oops, we got a nigga in there, you see? Y'all gotta be happy. All right? But we're gonna continue to walk upon these stones while these devils are in high places, you know, reaping the benefits of this, <laughs> reaping the benefits of this wicked society, man. All right? I got go ahead, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go right to this brother here. Habakkuk chapter two, verse 16. Thou art filled yeah, with shame for yeah, glory. glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee. 
change for spirit shall be on that glory. Like these, 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 these other nations, these demons truly don't believe that the Lord is coming from, man. They truly don't believe that the Lord is coming from. All right? But you're going to find out, just like when he plagued Egypt, you're going to kill firstborns, you're going to kill wives and daughters and children. You're gonna, the Lord's going to wipe these people out. And then it's going to be known that it was the power of the Lord that has done it, man. Go ahead. Uh, the second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 it's, seeing it is a righteous thing the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you right you see that to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you so it is a righteous thing to do so you know you got people in this well who knows you can't do that you know uh, uh, someone's doing you wrong matter of fact finish that off finish that off uh, verse 7 and to you who are troubled rest with us right when the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the most high. Right, so I'm gonna say this. Rest with any brother that has the truth, man. That that's a believer. That that's has the faith in this thing, man. If they teaching the right thing, you rush for them, man. You rest with them. If you're learning, learn, notes, ask questions, everything you can possibly do, man. To, 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 and, and, and pray that the Lord give you the spirit of understanding to receive it, man. All right? There's a lot of shit going on right now. Watch your back, brother. There's a lot of shit coming. Goddamn cars out here. What's going on here? Watch out. Everybody dead. Where are you? Everybody jump out the way. <laughs> Those who are trouble, man. Rest with men who have the truth, man. Rest with men who believe. Right? Go ahead. Oh, oh, oh Slocky, brother. I said this brother's gonna go next. Continue on. Uh, I'm going to read verse 7 again. Yeah. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh Shah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels right. in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not the most high. That's perfect because we're in that time now the Lord's about to make his great return, man. The Lord is about to make his great return. If you want to go to these churches and rest in there and, and, and be deceived and be lied to, go right ahead. That's your prerogative. That's your choice. All right? But being out here in the highways and byways, we don't have to have a filter. We don't have to be under a 501c3 tax statute. All right? We don't have to curb and trim our ways to, 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 to push the word, man. We can give it to you straight up and, and, and just uh, as matter of fact, man. And that's the way it should be brought out. If the Lord said he's coming to destroy some shit, we're going to tell you he's coming to destroy some shit. Right. If he's coming to put a nation of people in, in slavery, they're going to put a nation of people in slavery, man. That's right? right? That, that's it on that, right? Um, yeah, this goes into like the punishing everlasting and those that obey not the most high. Go ahead, continue on. Alright, yeah. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Right, because we've been out here preaching, man, from the head of apostles on down and very, very many of other brothers. We've been preaching, we've been telling you. Repent, understand what this thing's all about. But if you choose to be stiff necked and hard headed and hard hearted this whole time, believe you me, the Lord's gonna get the Lord's gonna get you, man. He's going to get you. Go ahead. Uh, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Right. Now, some people would tell you that everlasting meaning you're going to burn in torment forever and ever and ever. Which, once again, all you have to do is search the scriptures to find out if this whole hell thing is true or not. Just search the scriptures. A lot of people hear it and they receive it that way and don't bother examining anything. And that's why you have that Christianity belief about hell and purgatory. All right? You're supposed to search the scriptures. You're supposed to dig in deep. You're supposed to look up certain words. Right. You're supposed to go through all these things. No, speak on, Elder. Especially in, in, in parts where the scriptures seem to be contradictory. Yep. It's a, there's a reason behind this because you, there's something that you're not understanding. The scriptures might say, say, a, say a couple of different things, right? And you, you, you look at you look at it as a contradiction, but it's not a contradiction. It just means that you have to delve in a little further to find out what that thing is like. Yeah. First Timothy 4 and, uh, First Timothy 4 and 7, it says, But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Right. Ex exercise thyself unto godliness. You got you to gotta check these things. The, the scriptures talk about uh, the church of Berea. Right? We, we, 
we, we're in a we're in a we're in a fortunate but unfortunate uh, circumstance, right? Because we're so far removed from the time that the scriptures were written, right? You got you got all of these different uh, scri uh, scrolls and uh, epistles that were massed together as one work. We're so far removed from the time that they were written, we don't we don't know what a lot of it means. So when when, when we get taught certain things, right? It's our it's our responsibility to look at it. You got to look at it so you can see. So it's, 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 it's one thing to be able to repeat what the apostles teach us, but when you go into what they're teaching you so that you can have it in your own pocket, it makes it that much more uh, uh, fruitful and beneficial to you. Yep. Proverbs uh, 15 and 28. Yep. The heart of the righteous study up to answer, yep. but the mouth of the wicked pour about evil things. Right. So like, like there, there's a time, there was a time when I came into the truth and I just had a bunch of, uh, of talking points, right? And you kind of you kind of try to stay within those talking points. But what, what happens when the conversation goes outside of those talking points? Now you don't have anywhere to go. All right. So the, the, the key is the scriptures say this: uh, if somebody can find you have a function. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. First John two twenty. First First John two twenty one. Somebody yeah. grab that for me. You got something? Yeah, I got something. This is yeah. second. Uh, second Timothy two and fifteen. Yes. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved unto yeah. the Most High. Yeah. A worker, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Needed not to be ashamed. Why aren't you ashamed? Because you have all the answers in your in your in your pocket. People if people get frustrated with us because we we, we tend to uh, cut people short in their conversation. But it's because we we know what they're saying. We already understand what it is that they're saying, and we're ready to give the answer to what they're saying to us, right? But the reason why we, we're not ashamed in that way is because we, we, we did the work. Along with being taught, we also did the work to, to figure out certain things, to learn certain things. Let me say this real quick. We understand, and what you people don't understand is the, the teachings that you've been taught, it's, it's, it's played out. You're uniform. It's, 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 it's the same thing over and yep. over and over and yep. over again. As the elder said, we already know where you're going with it before you even say it. You know, yeah. so we can, he's right, in, right on point. Yep. Yep. Uh, continue on. It says, yep. rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The only way you can do that is if you know the truth. The only yep. way you can divide what the, what, what's, what's true and what's not is by knowing. You got to know that that's why the scripture. You got that, don't you? Yep. I got you. you got it. First John chapter yep. two verse twenty. Yep. <laughs> But ye have an unction yep. from the Holy One, right. and ye know all things. Now, let's look up that word unction. It, it basically means you have a duty, right? It's your responsibility to, to know everything. Man. You got to know everything. Uh, this guy, I like this guy, Jordan Peterson. Man. He said, he said the key to having having conversation is to know more than what you're talking about, and that's true. We 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 use the scriptures as our as our filter. We can't filter it through the scriptures. So we tend we tend not to deal with it, right? And that and that keeps us in a in a pocket, right? But we also know a bunch of other facts and details about certain things that help us that help us further what the scriptures are saying. Yep. And that's and that's important. It's important to do that. Go ahead. I got uh, first uh, second Peter chapter one verse ten. Yep. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence and make your calling and election sure. Right. If you do these things, you should never fail. Right. If you do these things, you shall never fail. Right. If, you're, if you're constantly uh, uh, stuck in, in the study, and really, really, man, the, the, when you when you really get into, let's say, let's say, for instance, uh, some years ago, Apostle Tahar, the elder Apostle Tahar, forgive me, um, had us to go into uh, uh, Second Ezra, the twelfth chapter. Second Ezra, the eleventh chapter. Second Ezra, the twelfth chapter. And you, you'll read it, right? And you'll get a, a face level thing that you're reading. You're reading something and it says what it says. But then when you get into the history behind those things, man, this this is sound. Or when you go into Daniel's the eighth chapter, when it talks about um, uh, the, the, horn, the, 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 horn, the horns of the goat, talking yeah. about Alexander, yeah. when you get into the details and the history of it, like, man, it, it's more, it, it confirms it, it makes it stronger, right? So that's, that's why it's important, and, and this is why we say Christianity hasn't done that. Christianity just sees what the scriptures say, and they try to make sense of it without those other details, without that extra work. It's, it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that. There's some instances where 
you don't you don't need to go uh, anywhere but the scripture. There's, there's many many instances where you don't have to go anywhere but the scripture. But it's important to know all the things that link with it, and then people can't really wiggle out of it. The, the scriptures say uh, that no man may be able to gain say no yeah. yeah. Right. That's 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 imperative, and Christianity doesn't do that. And that's what sets us apart from Christianity, and this is why. Uh, They'll, 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 uh, this guy that usually comes out, uh, and we've been dealing with him for years, and uh, we call him Sweet Money. That's what he was called when he was in, when he was in the world, I guess you could say. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. For, for, him, for by his standards, um, he'll say he'll say he won't bring his pastor down here because his pastor will say he's, we're going to bully him. We're gonna, it'll be so many against one. Right? That shouldn't matter. If you have the details, if you have the facts. If you, if you if you if you know the the minutia right and none of that matters you should be able to it's not we're not physically beating you up right so none of that should matter you should have all the details so you can like the scriptures say debate thy cause with thy brother you know? uh, Luke chapter 21 verse 14 yep. settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer right verse 15 for I will, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Right. The Lord, the Lord gives us all of this, man. The Lord gives us all of this. He's the one that guides us into this different, uh, these different wormholes that you can fall into when you're studying. The Lord is guiding you down that wormhole. Man. You know, it's the Lord. And then, so when you have all of that information, you got to think about what you're going to say. People think that we, we write these things down. Then we got we got you know a list of scriptures that we read in order and in a row and then we just deliver it but no the, the scriptures say that the spirit listeth where it will right meaning the conversation is going to go where it goes and you just have to be ready for that conversation right? but again but again that's what sets us apart from, from christianity right you can go to church and they can say a litany of things two hours worth of things you can't even raise your hand and say what do you, what do you mean this is something that's simple. Something, something as simple as what do you mean by that? Which is which will grow the conversation that much more if you can answer what do you mean? It'll grow the conversation, but they go up there and they spew their madness two hours straight. And you can't ask a question. And really it's just looked at as a, a level of disrespect when you ask a question about what they mean, right? I mean, those of us who grew up in, in the Baptist church, you know, you, you can't even really, you really got to think about a good spot where you could get up and go use the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if for those of you who grew up in the Baptist church, you know what I'm talking about. You got to even pick like a good spot. You got to double dutch with what the what's, what's going on and yep. get into the bathroom, man. It's, it's like that. You can't ask no questions. There's no forum in, in Christianity where you can question what it is they say. Either you either you believe it and you're part of it or you got to go. You know? I got a piece of it. Yeah. Um, First Peter, First Peter, chapter three, verse fifteen. Yep. But sanctify the Lord Yahweh in your hearts, yep. and be ready always to give an answer to That's every it. man that That's asketh it. you it. a reason of the hope that yeah. is in you and with this, meekness and, this, and, and this, What you'll fall into is, uh, like I said, I used to, I used to, I used to lean on the talking points, right? But this is, this is, this is deeper than the talking points because again. The conversation can be brought in, ready, ready to, like the scripture said, ready to answer all of those things. Do the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shabbat. You know. Go ahead. It's called, it's called John 5 and 29. Yep. Search the scripture, for in them he take he have eternal life, yep. and they are they which testify of me. That's right. The scriptures testify of the Father. Right? So we, we got to stay in those scriptures, man. And sometimes, sometimes say this one sometimes getting into other other details that that link with the scriptures help reignite that fire in the scripture. It, it helps it helps it's, it's important to really get into the those those extra i want to say extra like outside of the scriptures granted the, the scriptures is your primary source I, I hope i'm not being misunderstood when i say this but it's important it's important that you get into the other things that we, we know that we know the scriptures are real yeah right so it's important to get the, the details of that reality because it's there because we know it's true yeah. like the history yeah. of it yeah yeah absolutely. it makes it it 
makes it real. Right. Like I was I was reading this article about um, about the uh, about the called Greek patriarchs. And he was he was talking about how he used the scriptures to develop a a timeline to when when everybody existed or, or at least together how did they know each other right so did abraham get a chance to see his grandchildren which in, in some cases he did right he was he was a, he was alive when when jacob was born towards the towards the end of his life jacob was young but abraham was still alive and it's just give it give it reality it helps you to think about like all right well then my kids right have seen my grandmother which is their great grandmother so if they, now that you can link that circumstance with the scriptural circumstance, it makes, it makes it more real to you. You know? You got something, bro? I got one for you. Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes 39 verse 1, yeah. But he that gives his mind to the law of the Most High and is yeah. occupied yeah. in the meditation thereof, yeah. who seek out the wisdom of all the ancient yeah. and be occupied prophecy, he will keep the same of the renowned men and where soft our power was all, he will be there also. He will seek out the secret of great sentences and be conversant in the parables. Right, be, be, be conversant in the parables. Uh, what's that, uh, Proverbs uh, 1, the words of the wise and the dark, dark scenes, uh, 1 and 7, 1 and 4. Okay. What's 1 and 7? Talk about it again. Uh, the fear of the Lord. Lord. Fear of the Lord. Yeah. This is, um, I saw that one. Yeah. Proverbs 1 and 1. Yep. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, yep. to receive the instructions of wisdom. Somebody get uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and uh, 25. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Yep. To give subtlety to the simple and to the young man's knowledge and discretion. Yep. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Yep. And a man of understanding shall attain it to wise counsel. To understand a proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. You see, the scriptures in, in, in many cases can be dark and hard to understand, but you you got to sit with it. You got to sit with it. And the Lord, the Lord is going to give you the answer. He's going to give you the answer. You got that in uh, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 25. Yep. I apply my heart to know. I applied my heart to know. When you apply your heart to know, that means you searching for that, man. You searching. High and low. You know, you apply your heart to know. Go ahead. I apply my heart to know yep. and to search and to seek out wisdom, mm -hmm. the reason of things, and to know the wickedness of folly. Right. Even a foolishness and madness. That's it, man. So we apply this heart to know. And that's our job. We gotta apply our heart to know. And, and I, I hate to take it away from the point that the elder would make it, but it's, it's the, we say all of that to say that's what sets us apart from the average everyday Christian. They get they get upset when they come and speak and, and, and debate with us, if you will, and have conversation about what the scriptures say. But it's clear after. Uh, you know, a few minutes of the conversation, that they're very, uh, they're, they're not very thorough. They don't, they don't really comb. Say they, they're partial. Well said. Like, like you can, you can, uh, you can, if you, <laughs> bad analogy, but sometimes I, I'll use a pick to, you know, pick out my beard. But when I use a comb, I, it, it, I comb it out even more. Right, you can use a pick and it'll, it'll, you know, it'll fill out or whatever. But when you use a comb, you really, you really get in there, right? And that's that's the key. You gotta with the scriptures. You can't just pick it. You can't just pick at it. You gotta get that comb and really get through there. Maybe just, you know, just get it wet so it softens up the naps a little bit, and then you get that comb through there. You know what I mean? That's that's how you gotta, that's how you gotta do the scriptures, man. You gotta you gotta sit down with it. Sometimes I forget that. Sometimes I, I forget. And you get, you get, like, you get, not complacent, I don't want to use the word complacent, but it's like you, you, you reach plateaus, right? And then you get to a place where you, you, you get, you get used to what you know, and then you, you run with that for a minute, but you always got to go back, you got, you got to go back and, 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 like I said, light that fire. This is Revelation 30 and 20. Yep. Behold, I stand at the door. What is it? Revelation 3 and verse 20. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yep. If any man hear my voice yep. and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. That's it. That's what we look for, man. The Lord, the Lord, when we, when we at that table, so to speak. Right, and you, and you, know, you, know, you get you get to eat. Him, you want the Lord to be with you. You, want, you know that's why you when you when you're about to eat a real meal, you what you do? You, you pray over your food. You thank the Lord for that food. And ask that the sanctified food. It's the same thing when you go into this room. When you when you when you get ready to embark on uh, you know a learning session, if you will, you you, you, you pray, you pray to ask the Lord to give you understanding and hopes that He'll He'll sup with you. Said, no, go. You ever you because sometimes you can be reading, man. Oh, that's, that's that um, that's that scripture. Then you get to looking for a scripture, and then you find it, and that takes you down another wormhole. And you find another scripture, and that takes you down another wormhole. You know, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay in that. You gotta keep doing that. You know? yeah, this is uh, Second Timothy uh, two and fifteen. Yep. It says, uh, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, right, rightly right. dividing the word of truth." Right. Read that, right? So it's important that we, we do that. And again, that's what that's what sets us apart. And and who would who would do that but the the people who the scriptures really belong to? Right. Right. The, the scriptures that the scriptures really belong to us. So of course we would we would take care in in trying to figure out what the scripture says because it, it, it's ours. It resonates with us most. Right. The, the scriptures tell you that. Um, the, the name is dreadful to the heathen, right? So along with the name, it's also the, the words. It's dreadful to the heathen. They can't really get into the scriptures the way we do and add the life of it like we add the life to it like we do. The scriptures say that we're the salt of the earth, right? So we we we, we put that seasoning on it and you just sometimes I'll read the scriptures and sometimes it's funny. Sometimes you'll read the scriptures, sometimes it's it'll sadden you. Right? It's just like watching a a, a Tyler Perry movie, man. <laughs> You might you might laugh at some moments, you might cry at some moments, right? You cheer at some moments. It's like that when you really when you really sit with it, right? There's been times where I've read the scriptures, man, and I, I've been in tears. You know, it's a drama, it's a it's a comedy, it's a you know, it's all it's all those things that, that, that how 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 we classify in the world these different types of films and books that we read. The scriptures are, are all those things. It's funny when I hear people say, "I don't read, I don't read the Bible because it's boring." I'm like, boring. Like, how do you? Like, how is it boring? Like, what's boring about? Then they say the vowels and those, and I'm like, all right. So because the grammar is different, it's boring. The activity in it is undeniable. There's, there's, there's all the things you look for in a, a, a BET movie. Is what you'll find in the scriptures. There's, there's drama. There's betrayal. You want to know how right? I got here? There's, there's a, there's a romance. Right, there's adultery, there's all there's all kinds of things in there. I don't know how you classify this more. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. There's like a few minute things that Esau did, or well, like little what they call white lies, to like try to get people to that point and, and having people believe that you know Earth is seven billion years ago. And it has you it, it, it puts in your mind that these stories happen such a long time ago but when you put it into the proper time frame it gets more interesting because you could it's more it's more believable but because he saw puts that out there that the earth is whatever yeah. trillions of years long you think when you think of the bible you think of this stuff that happened millions of years ago you know centuries ago but it's not it's not the case he saw what you to believe that but these stories ain't as far as you as the normal person think they are I was I was listening to this uh this little clip. Hey, what's up? Hey, yeah, back, sir. man. You get close and close. Just give us a little space. Yeah, it's okay. Just give us a little space. You, you, you give us... So I was reading. I was listening to this uh, podcast, and the guy was saying, in order for a guy to uh, a person to be born, you have to have four grandparents, right? Eight great grandparents, sixteen great great grandparents. And when you think about that, it's, it's when you think about it in that context, it's not that long ago. That wasn't that long ago. When you think of the time of, uh, like, let's say Genesis, for instance, when you think of the time of, of Jacob, who was our, who, everybody here, Jacob is your great, 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 great grandfather, so many generations ago. That's, your, that's when you're reading the scripture, you're reading about your grandfather. When you read about Jacob, when you read about Isaac, you're reading about your great grandfather. 
And, you, and when you read about Abraham, you read about your great great grandfather. So many, of course, there's generations removed, obviously, but that's your that's the people you come from. It's, it wasn't that long ago. What happened to Abraham? I said Abraham. And that, yeah. that concept um, is like going back. It's the attitude that we had towards one another. We treat each other like family because yeah. we know that we literally are family. But now, as we see somebody, you see a so-called black man, you just think of a complete stranger as before with that. You understood that lineage. You understood your history and your heritage. And you, 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 you follow the law and you conduct yourself as such. Yeah, what, 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 what comes to mind is uh, when I think, I, think it was, I think it was Jacob that went to Laban. Well, Jacob went to Laban when he, when he, and he worked for him for that time period to get his, he, he was working for Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he got Leah first and then, oh, uh, Rachel, the water brother. He got Rachel and then he, and then he, uh, he got Leah first and then Rachel. But uh, when, when Laban saw him, he, got, he said, yeah, that's definitely Isaac. That's Isaac's kid right there. <laughs> Damn so Isaac boy. Because that's how we acted back then. Like, who's your, who's your father? And then you would say who your dad is. But even, even like where I'm from, that's how we, we, we got down. Uh, you, don't, you don't remember me? I don't know, so and so, so and so, so. My cousin is, is your grandmother's sister, and, then, yeah. and, that, and that's how that's how you really got down. That's really how you should get down. You have a last name. You was Solomon, David's boy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's King, it. Dave, King that's David's it. boy. That's it. There were no there were no surnames, and if you and your surname, if you had a surname, if you took on a surname, it was it was uh, relative to where you, what line you came from. Like when we say when we do the Passover, so so to say, right? When we do the Passover. We're introducing ourselves to the first and second priest. We'll say our name, we'll say the tribe we come from, and then the nation we come from. And that's how you, 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 you did that, you know? And sometimes I, I get into this funk, right? Because I never knew my father's father. I knew my dad, which is which is beautiful too, but I never knew my father's father. He was, he was killed before I was born. And it bothers me. Damn, I want to. I want to. I don't know. I know a lot of my father's family, but it's on his mother's side. I don't know my father's family on his father's side. And I could be walking by somebody that's my my cousin and not know it, right? But the beauty of that is we can go back to the scriptures and still get that same uh, connectivity to family because those are those are our great grandparents that we're reading about. Uh, Romans 15 and 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written before time right. were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort That's of it. the scriptures That's might it. have hope. That's it. That's comfort. It's, reading those scriptures is comforting because we're reading about our, our lineage. That's our, that's our history. Right? And, and like, I, I'll be honest with you, man. When I was, when I grew up, I grew up in, I'll say, like a, a, a black consciousness type of lifestyle. You know, for those of y'all who know my father, you know what I'm talking about. That's the that's the that's the lifestyle. I, that's how I grew up. It's, but it, it was never it was never gratifying. When you hear about uh, Hotep and Emotep and Aset and all these different things, you don't. There's no connectivity to it. You just reading it. It felt like you was reading a, a book that you you got from the library, like a like a like a Harry Potter book. Exactly or the, like that. Or the mummy. I don't know. That's the only human yeah, technique. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, there, was no, uh, there was no connectivity to it. So when I read the scriptures, I think like, damn, this is my grandfather I'm reading about. It, it, it's, it's, it's comforting. It is, man. It is. So, I mean, some people might not think about it like that, but I do. You got something to let him get this one? That's all. Isaiah 34 and 16. Yep. Seek you out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded and his spirit have gathered them. That's it, man. That's it. You seek out of the book of the Lord, man. That's where you get your comfort from. The scriptures, the scriptures will tell you that the scriptures are the comfort. The scriptures will tell you that. And it, and it is comforting, man. It's, I can't, it's, it's like, it's, it's nice. People, people that are so-called atheists, right? They'll ask you to justify what the scriptures say. But you really can't. Because I can't, I can't make you feel what I feel when I'm reading the scripture. I can't, I can't express that to you. I don't have any, uh, any, anything tangible for you outside of the way they make me feel. Right. This is why this, the scriptures say that, uh, the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we're the children of the, uh, of the, of the, of the Messiah, right? Because there's really no, there's really nothing that we, we don't, all the documents have been destroyed, right? There was a time when you go, when you, like when you read in Nehemiah, 
And when you read in Ezra, you know, and, they, and they were really, it was really important to know your lineage, especially if you were claiming priest. Uh, a priest. You really had to know what tribe you came from, and you had to provide documentation for that. We don't have any of that. So that means it existed at one time, right? It existed at one time. We don't have it anymore. And so we gotta kind of just you gotta you gotta, you gotta go by the way you feel. Like your, your spirit resonates with the scripture. Right. And then the atheists they believe in the Big Bang theory, but they weren't even there. But then they want us to believe what they believe. But here's the thing: they, they'll, they'll 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 create a standard that says you had to have seen it in order for it to be true. But then spew something like that. Yeah. That's a great point. Well, go ahead, bro. So like, uh, Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one. Yep. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's the it. evidence of things not seen. Right, right. The evidence of things not seen. Because we don't we didn't see Jacob, but we are the evidence that Jacob lived. We are the evidence of that. We didn't see him, right? But we, we we're here. And we, we know we know <laughs> Jake, man. That's what we do. We we lay we lay seed. That's what Jake does. We have kids. And so like when I think of like uh, we was we were we were getting into I think I think it was uh <laughs> Wait, he waited until he got way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, but that's what I mean. What's this? Is what I mean. That's what I mean. What's, what is that word? What is that word? I saw him. I see the, I see the meme mugging. Oh, we gonna wait till he gets all up, up the road and say something. Let's see. Let's see. You see? Look at that guy. He said he said fuck the Hebrew Israelites. He said that guy's worthless. <laughs> He's worthless. That's a nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's never done anything in his life. He's never going to do anything in his life. Yeah, okay. Maybe we better be quiet. We're going to grab a book out of it. So we were talking about, we were talking about how we, we went into Egypt 70 souls and came out 600, was it 600,000? Please. Overall, <laughs> yeah, it is, uh, and then we came out with six hundred thousand. That's a that's a man. And that's a great point. That's a great point. That's a great point. Six hundred thousand men, right? So that means it was even more because you got to you got to count the the, we the daughters that we had as well, right? Right. And so that's a lot of that's a lot of seedling. That's a lot of seedling, right? Hey. That's our heritage, man. When you read the scriptures, right? You Levi, right? When you read the scriptures about Aaron, Moses, or any Levi, that's your, that's your cousin. Your cousin's the uncle. When you read about uh, Mattathias, right, the Hasmonean dynasty, those, those, are, those are your people. They said, fuck this. You know, it might have sound like, fuck that. We're going, we're going to kill those people. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's, that's new, that's new, that's new. I'm just, I'm just teasing. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, why you coming? Why don't you come do us for that? Oh, for that. Yeah, man. And that's it. But that's our people, man. That's yes. That's our people. You read about those things. You're reading about your heritage. You're reading about your culture. You're reading about your heritage and you're reading about your culture, man. That's our, that's our history book. That's our record book. My grandmother, my grandmother, my um, my mother's mother. She had this this book that went from, I think her mom's generation all the way back into history. Um, and uh, it was it was a, it was something that she held near and dear to her heart. She loved. But you should hold the scriptures near and dear to your heart in the same way, because those that is our heritage. That is that is the the chronicles, <laughs> if you will, of our of our history, man. You know, it's how we got here to the Americas, right? From from. From the time that the promise was made to our father Abraham all the way up to now, you know? This is uh, 2 Peter uh, 3 and 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord yeah. is a thousand years, yeah. and a thousand years is one day. Right, so it wasn't that long ago, man. It, it wasn't that long ago. It was, it was a very, uh, especially in the eyes of the Lord, it was a short time ago, man. It was a short time ago. It wasn't that long ago. Even we, we think of two thousand years, we think of that as a long time. Two thousand years is a hundred years twenty times. It's not a lot. That's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. We that wasn't that long ago, man, when the Lord Yahweh Shah was walking on the earth. When you think of uh when you think of even uh 
my mind went to Alexander for some reason. But even if you think of that time period, that wasn't that long ago. Man. That wasn't that long ago, you know? I thought it was really great. Yeah. The effects of that, those kingdoms still um, hold weight today. So that goes to show you that it we'll couldn't have been as long as you, the average person could see. Right. The scriptures talk about how America is the second leg of the Roman Empire, right? That, that means that wasn't that, that wasn't that long ago. So when you go when you go from the pagan Roman Empire to America, that's not that's not that many years. It's not that long. The style of governance yep. concerning the Senate yep. is still in um, intact to this day. Yep. Even slavery. Yeah, even slavery, even slavery wasn't that long ago. I measure slavery by the uh, by the age of my son, one of my sons. Uh, the last slave died. 1971. My son was born in 1971. Oh, wow. The last slave, McGee, Sylvester McGee, yeah. died in 1971. Your son was born in 71. 71. Yeah, so it wasn't that long. I measure slavery by my son. Was that 50 years? Was that 50 years, something like that? 50 years. 51 years. Well, they say technically they were 18, 16. They say, they say right. and you have like at least like 50 years of segregation after slavery. So it ain't that far off. It wasn't that long ago, man. It ain't that far off. And then I, was, I forget what I was listening to when they, 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 they were reasoning why uh, they, they made all of the, the images of the 70s and black and white. When you go back into history, it's because they want you to feel like it was a long time ago. The 70s wasn't that long ago. Right. Mar Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and all that. That wasn't that long, 50 years ago. My, my, my mother was born 63. So she was alive when, when all of them dudes were born. All that shit, they, my parents were alive. They were children, but they were alive. But for us, it seems like ages ago, because we don't know. It's funny, we, we, uh, we was we at? I think we was in Harlem some years ago. And we went to go see the apostles for us. And we was on the road where um where Malcolm X got got shot. And the reason why I knew that because I was I was getting into I was reading that skinny book, that, that, that biography, or whatever. The autobiography of Malcolm X. I was reading that. And when I read the script, I was like, yeah, we was just down there. Malcolm X was yeah, just down there. Malcolm X by the by the age of my son, you see? I believe that. Because he he be uh bumped up was here in the uh, uh, you know? Matter of fact, if you go this way, what direction is it? Six. Well, no, nah, he's because he said he, he walked oh, um, where he was at in uh, Roxbury all the way up here. Roxbury's not that far from there, but all the way up to the north. You go from Roxbury to the north, and that's that's a long ass walk. And he said he, he, he walked these streets, man. That's that's not that's not that long ago. He just had uh, Queen Elizabeth that died at the age of 96. Yep. So she was in, in power when in the 60s. And um, during apartheid, well, apartheid in South Africa ended in '94, but going back to colonization from the beginning part, so yeah, he was allowed doing a lot of a lot of these atrocities. Yeah. So Esau really can't use that that sentiment of it was a long time ago, or I was dead, or right, right, right. no, you got you got somebody that's sitting on the throne that was alive and well doing a lot of a lot of atrocities that was committed to all over the world, India. Africa, South America, Jamaica. If I may add two, uh, 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 the, 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 the one that down, that down the head, a couple of diamond, the emerald, all that you got it from Africa. It's it's good. African Jew, I think it's one of the largest, it's yeah. one of the, the largest diamonds yeah. ever found, and she still possesses them. They yeah. stole it. Yeah. They said they want it back. They stole it from India. Their diamond bag, they want the crown. I heard that some of their diamonds are in it too. And the crown of uh, the biggest ruler. They want 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 the biggest ruler. That was gotta go down, man. We're gonna swing it back to Esau and his treachery. His treachery. No, that's right. His treachery, because he's a damn devil, man. Go ahead. Ezekiel 35, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Now, when you when you read these scriptures, right? And you know, a lot of these people are talking about Esau's been done away with. There's, there's no track or no sign of the Edomites. So you gotta ask yourself, are these future prophecies or what? Why is it why is it always mentioned Edom Esau? Why is it mentioned Edom Esau all the time as future as future events, man? Go ahead. It says our son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir to prophesy against it yep. and say unto it, Thou said the Lord power, but hold for Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch my hand against thee, and will make thee 
that's what it is. Right now, modern day Mall Sith, it's still over there, man. It's still in, it's still in business over there. They got the, they got they got the, the mountain there where they get the region that's all carved out. It's now a tourist attraction. The Lord said he's gonna make the most desolate. So if Mount Sea was most desolate, there wouldn't be a goddamn stone standing over there, man. So that's talking about here in America, man. The Lord's gonna destroy this place with a, with a perfect destruction. It's gonna be marvelous when the Lord does what he does over here, man. Go ahead. I will lay thy city waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashi and Shai. He's gonna lay the city's waste, all right? Now hold Revelation 18 as well. Because this place is gonna be made desolate. All right, and we and we truly believe that, man. There's no ifs and buts about it. America has been so wicked and treacherous throughout the world. It's time for it to pay its tab, man. That's right. right. You gotta pay that debt now, man. All right. Go ahead. Revelation 18 and 1. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightning with his glory, and he cried mightily with his strong voice, saying, "Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen." and it becomes the habitation of devil mm -hmm. and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, when you first came when you first came in, reading that without understanding, we was like, yeah, you see you devils go over here, you devils. But that's talking about those doleful creatures that are gonna inhabit this place after the Lord destroys this place, yep. all right? That's what that's actually talking about. And, and, and once the Lord destroys it, there's not going to be left a stone upon a stone over here in this place known as America, man. Right. It's going to be clean sweat. Go ahead. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's right. And they have done that. And this is why these nations are now wanting payback. These nations are now wanting to get revenge against her. Because they drank of that wine. They've been deceived. They've been lied to. All right. By the master deceiver, the devil. That's why we call him the devil, because he's the great deceiver. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And that's their own goddamn fault. They committed fornication with her. And that's why when you read the book of Jeremiah, it speaks about those kings coming up against her to destroy her. When you read the book of Obadiah, it talks about those that were confederacy have, have turned against him, man. America is finished. And the only people that don't see it are the people that live here. <laughs> because like I said earlier, You've been shadowed or you've been, you've been guarded by the truth of the matter, man. You don't know the truth. You don't understand what's going on. And then when you have prophets on the highways and byways bringing it out, the people that walk by, they look at you and like, yeah, right, buddy. Like we're on some old pipe dream. But you're going to find out real soon. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Right. The merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. And that's exactly true, man. All these other nations have become rich off of the bones primarily of the so-called Negroes, so-called Puerto Ricans and Native Americans, man. They brought their business here. We're the, I mean, we're the, we're the suckers of the earth, if you will. Our people are the suckers of the earth. We buy any and everything, man. Even even shit that don't have, have any value to it, our people go out and buy it. Diamonds ain't got no goddamn value to it. But you see, especially them rappers, man, they go, they're gonna go see Jacob, go see Jacob and get the guy. It's all bullshit. That's all bullshit. And even so to the point, even the goddamn money is useless and worthless, man. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, right. that ye be not partakers of her sins. That's right, because this place is going to be destroyed. This place is going to be utterly destroyed and annihilated. There's no hope for this place. Go ahead. And that you receive none of her plagues. And the plagues are going to be primarily some thermonuclear missiles that land upon the earth, all right? But also in the meantime, you're going to have all types of other plagues going on that the Lord's going to send down here. As we mentioned earlier, the pestilence, the famine, okay? The, the, the evils that are going to be uh, upon the earth, man. Those are also known as plagues. Just like when the Lord smote Egypt, when the Lord smote Egypt with them plagues, it wasn't just one plague. It was all types of shit going on. And likewise, it's going to be the same thing here. It's going to repeat itself all over again here in modern day Egypt. Go ahead. For a sin have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquity. That's the beauty about it. You know, you think, you devils think that nobody's watching. You devils think that nobody's going to hold you accountable for your actions and your dirty deeds, man. But your sins have reached up into the heavens. <clears throat> the heavenly Father and the Yahweh from Yahweh Shai, they know what you've done. And they're giving you they're giving you that little bit of leeway to hang yourself. Because when they come back to, to, to inquire about you, 
Then they're going to take you, man. Hold, hold that. Go ahead. This is uh, Isaiah 47 and 7. The same thou says, I shall be a lady forever, right. so that thou did not did, so thou did not lay these things to heart, right. neither did remember the latter end of it. Right. Now, mind you, it said thou will be a lady forever, because you you people have, you, you so-called elites, have the people so blinded that they think they don't understand what the, what's about to happen out here. And America's gonna prosper. They're in a little phase right now where it's a little, little salty right now. But they're gonna bounce back and get back on track. You know, and rise up to that delicacy where you feel you are, uh, you are just the, the queen of the whole earth, man. This shit's coming to an end. That's America's right. gonna be destroyed. That's right. We don't care what you say. We don't care what you believe. We don't care what you say about us. We don't care how you feel about us. America's gonna be destroyed, man. That's right. right. And ain't nobody gonna be able to stop this shit, man. What? You got you got Jake's back during the time. I'll put it this way: you got Jake's right now, who are, who are hearing of these words that we're saying, and saying, well, why? Why? Why do you want it to be destroyed? Because we truly understand that there's no hope in it for us in this place, man. So the Lord said Himself. If you if if don't shorten the bitch up, there ain't gonna be no flesh left to be saved. Go ahead. It's going from the comment board. Yeah, uh, bring them out. GMS Hara Car. This is the book of Joel 3 and 19. Perfect. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Eden shall be a desolate wilderness. Yep. For the violence against the children of Judah. Perfect. Because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Perfect. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. Yep. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. And Judah being that head tribe, man, you Judites, you're gonna have, you're gonna, man, you Judites gonna, you better get your minds right, man. You better get your minds right. And when the Lord comes back, man, you better be on point. You better be on point. You better know who you are. You better know the Lord's name. You better know the Son's name. Okay? You better know who your enemy is. Because if you join hand in hand with Esau on that day, you might as well, you might as well dig a hole and you both jump in together, man. Go ahead. Kind of, if I can get one more, this is our Parab Yasharala. It, it's Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. That's right. And this, the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, it says the rich man's wealth is his strong city and as in high wall in his own conceit, before destruction, the heart of man is haunted and before right. honor is humility. Right, and that's all Esau got. He has the wealth to, to prove himself. That's all he has. He ain't got no might, he ain't really got no strength. And that's why the Lord's gonna come back in and smash him because he compares himself to the Lord. He compares himself as being the Lord. But you ain't got the uh, the, the arm, the might to fight the Lord, man. So the only thing you got is your riches and your riches are even tanking right now. Right. Your, your, your gold is all fucking fucked up. Go ahead. This is Malachi chapter four, verse one. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Perfect. And all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. There's no way around this. These scholars read these scriptures, man. You don't think Esau put his top dogs on this Bible? You don't think he's done that? Of course he's done it. And he knows that the Lord is now making that work happen because of all the things that are now starting to happen in the world right now. It's by the hand of the Lord. So best believe they know what's going on. Best believe they're not going to put the head, you know, the, the head men of Israel on the news because they know what it will bring. It'll bring more, more sheep into the flock, man. People are walking around aimlessly trying to figure out what's going on in the world. Damn, what should I do? What's happening? You know? Go ahead, Esau, put us out there. Put us on the mainstream media. And, and, and you're going to have an influx of people Googling, YouTubing, searching, seeking. All right? You done fucked up once. When you put that rapper on there and said, I'm an Israelite, whatever his name is. <laughs> hey, you know, fucked up once with that, because that woke a lot of people up. Just that line in that music, that rap music, woke some people up, man. Right. Now dare you put this, you put this set on on on, on the world news, man. Because because the only thing Esau likes to do is he likes to put on things that are gonna demonize us. Yeah, there's gonna be situations where you get in somebody's ass and you be yelling and screaming, of course. But they ain't gonna put up there when we start talking about the demise of Esau Edom, the destruction of Babylon the Great, or the nuclear missiles being shot from one end of the earth until the other, or the raising up of the children of Israel in the latter days. He don't want that to be known, man. He don't want that to be known. That's the that's the one of the greatest threats to known to man if he does something like that. Right. Alright? On um, where we at?
Congratulations. Hold on, we got some precepts. I got Jeremy. Come here, I'm going to hit you brothers on the beat mark. James 5 and 1. Go ahead. It says, Go to now, ye rich men. Right. Weep and howl for right. your miseries that shall come upon you. You see that, you rich men? You rich men of the earth? We're going to have you in chains and shackles. Them DuPonts and Rockefellers and Rothschilds and whomever else this so called Illuminatus may be, those of the dark shadows. We're going to come and get you too. There's no escape out of this thing. It may not seem as if it's. If it's it may not seem as it's possible right now, but it's going to be when we come over there. And, you know, even these devils that, that has recently died too, they're going to come back to slave. Oh, we're going to put the spirit back in them. Lord, 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 Lord willing, he gives us that power to put the spirit right back in them. Right. Shake the dust off them devils like, yeah, we're here, nigga. We're going to do that. Shake them up, you know, shake them up. We're going to we have that power. Lord willing, we have that power to shake them up like this. Yeah, man, you know how to be doing that the queen or shake them up instead. The queen of England. You know? The queen of England, she going to come back, you know, and she's going to have to serve that slavery too. There is no secret. Like the elder said, there's no escaping. No, right. the no, they're they're going to regenerate again. Come back, come back. That's right. That's right. So in, in saying that, you know, they think once they die, they have escaped the possibility of going into slavery. Mm -hmm. But you coming back, you're going to come back to you, and we're going to make sure we put you back in remembrance to the dirty shit that you've done. All right? Finish off. I'm going to come right around. I'm going to leave no stone unturned on this one. Go ahead. Verse 2. Your riches are corrupted and your right. garments moth eaten. Right, and nobody ain't nobody wants your goddamn dollar bill. Nobody wants your cash money, your quarters, nickels, and dimes. Ain't nobody want that shit, man. If you want to deal with these countries, you're gonna have to deal in gold, man. And, and who knows what these devils intend to the gold these days, man. Half that shit is all riddled with fucking impurities anyway. Go ahead. Your gold and silver is canker, yep. and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. That's right. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures together for the last days. You have heaped treasures together for the last days, meaning what? All you elitists throughout the four corners of the world who, you know, who go back and forth, making all kinds of big deals, selling all kinds of land and islands and portions of different countries to each other. You've heaped treasures together for the last days. It's over. The time has come where you now have to face the music, man. And the Lord's gonna to see to it, and with the Lord's and with the Lord's blessing and grace unto us, we're gonna to see to it that you be putting shackles and chains, man. Right, that's right. Rightfully so. When you come up to womb, you little babies, like I always say, you know, <laughs> put the little shackles on. You can't. You're gonna. You're gonna have to, man. You're gonna have to put them. Little, you, they can't have one ounce of freedom from from their birth. They can't have one ounce of freedom. Now the babies come out. They wanna kick and shit, kick and all this cry. No, 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 no. They going into slavery as soon as they come up the motherfucking womb. All right? Because what they did to That's our right. babies, put them on the goddamn shores of the island where the alligators were, yep. use them as gator bait, smash them when they came out the womb. Come on, man. And here we are, we're saying we're going to put fucking shackles on you, little devil. Some brothers are going to use your motherfuckers as doormats, man. As soon as you come out there and smash them on the ground, start doing this right, 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 right. Look at the motherfucker. What you going to do, nigga? What you going to do? Gonna do? That's, that's what's going to happen out here. That's what's going to have to happen out here. You see, the Lord said, seeing is it a righteous thing with the Lord to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Why? It's all going to be done justly, right? Ain't gonna, we ain't gonna be wicked, we're gonna be doing things justly. Hey, according man. to how the Lord said it's gonna be, right, man. Right. Right. Go ahead. For how, behold, the higher of the labors which have reaped down your fields, yep. which is of you kept back by fraud, yep. Christ, yep. and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ends of the Lord of Sabbath. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna say this. You know how much money Jake has made in their lifetime? Because he saw tax, he saw had all kinds of fraudulent dealings. Left niggas with fucking pennies, man. Left niggas with fucking pennies. Pennies to the dollar. You know? Go out and work 60 hours a week just to come home with fucking $500, man. Talking about you owe this, you owe that. Some of them, and then not to mention the child support shit. You know, that's a whole nother fucking story. You deal, you, you owe child support, that's your ass. They're gonna take it, they're gonna levy your bank account. They're going to intercept your tax return. They're going to fucking put a lien on your goddamn car. They're going to take your license. Trade licenses. I'm telling you, trade licenses. They're going to get every ounce of you because you owe some goddamn child support. When in fact, they're the ones that started this shit about throwing a man out the house where he can't take care of his kids. Goddamn devil. 
And you people want to live here and you want to stay here and continue to try to grow here and talk about we can live together and love one another? Get the hell out of here, man. Nobody loving nobody around here, man. The scriptures tell you the, the love of the world is wax cold. Go ahead. It says, uh, verse 5, ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and then wanton. Listen, go, go, go on one of these four magazines, right? You go on four magazines and look at where these devils are sitting on million, billion dollar yachts in the crystal blue waters. You don't see no niggas over there. You don't see no jakes over there. And if you do yeah, see a jake over there, he's a goddamn servant on the boat. He cleaning up shit. You know? So you have lived deliciously throughout the whole earth. You have been on top of Mount Carmel just living, living it up and being blissful, man. Go ahead. Verse 5, ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just and have doeth not resist you. Right, you have killed and condemned the just. And that is continuous. That's a continual thing that's happening to this very day. You ain't got to be putting a bullet to our head. The food you're feeding us, the air we're now breathing. The water now we're now drinking, man. Every little thing that we're putting to our bodies is poison. And we have to live this way pursuant to Ezekiel. What's that? Ezekiel um, 4 and 30, 13. 13. Is it Ezekiel 4 and 13? You know, we have to eat out the fire of bread. You see I, I that? Got my, I got my head. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 13. And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their foul bread amongst the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Right, so so once again, we ain't trying to sit here and, and talk about we gotta eat them. We ain't, there's nothing good to eat, man. Even the fucking the the, 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 the the um strawberries got all kinds of chemicals in them. The apples got chemicals in them. I mean, you're eating most of the chemicals. If you take an apple, right, you take a little butter knife, and start scraping that shit off. All that goddamn wax that you fucking consume. That's clogging your that's clogging your system up, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? But most people, most people are on the go. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. So they grab, they go to the supermarket, grab a couple apples, get in the car, crunching into that shit, but not even considering the amount of pesticides and waxes that are on those things, man. So we're eating our defiled bread in the land of our captivity. There's no way out of it. You know, you gotta eat the best of the worst, which is all bad. But, you know, you got to try to pick and choose as you go through this thing. You know, we refrain from eating pork, but these devils are putting shit, pork and shit that would you least expect it, man. And they ain't putting the labels on it. That's why when I go, if I go to a restaurant, man, I pick my shit apart. I'm like, yo, what's in here? What's going on? Because, you know, it's just me. That's just how I am. You know, so this devil is working through all kinds of shit. Me and my wife had went to a, uh, an Italian restaurant. We got the appetizers, right? I was like, yo, is any pork anything in it? He's like, no, no. I'm sorry, I didn't ask him. I read the menu. Reno didn't have any pork in it. But of course, I examined my shit. And sure shit, what the fuck is this? A fucking piece of sausage. So I tell the lady, can you get the manager over here? He said, yeah, the is that sausage? He's like, yep, just, you know, just all, yep, it's sausage. I said, well, the menu said there's no, no pork in there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, so I told him I'm allergic, I'm allergic to pork. So now if I ate that, you know, I gave him a little spiel, you know, to see what you I gave him a little spiel. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. We'll cop the meal, cop the meal. Like, yeah, well, you know, I feel better that way. You know? So the meal was free, but you gotta you can't trust this devil, man. Even with the menu he provided for you, you can't trust the devil. Go ahead. Yep. Verse 7. Uh, it says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. That's why we hold fast, man. That's why we hold. The Lord said. Wait, wait here upon me. Be patient. You have to be patient in this thing. All right. You you may be you may be going through all kinds of shit. You may be have you may have all kinds of ailments. But because you have those ailments and you're going through all those things, the Lord isn't going to swoop down and decide to destroy this place because of you know your ailments. This thing is bigger than we are, man. This thing is much bigger than we could ever imagine. And the Lord's going to do it in His time frame. So therefore, as the Scripture says. Whatever come upon thee, take cheerfully, but not our change to a lower state. Meaning, hold fast. The scriptures tell you that. Hold fast to that which is good. You know? You got this demon up. You hear this demon up there? That's you see the goddamn microphone. And there women out there preaching, and there men are out there preaching. 
It's just a, a madhouse up there. It's a madhouse up there. Yeah, right. Fucking hollering. It's, and it's, it's, it's distracting me. Go ahead. It says, uh, I started to talk again. Verse 7, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth mm -hmm. and had long patience for it mm -hmm. until he received the early and lighter rain. That's right. So we're going to be patient and wait upon the Lord Yahweh by the Lord Shot. Hold on, brother. I'm, I'm going to swing around. And these brothers are hot and ready over here. They about to, they about to knock the camera down. They, <laughs> I, got you, I got you, brothers. You brothers are charging up. Boy. Go ahead, brother. You brothers are charging up. They're ready to run it. Amos 1 and 11. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, for three transgressions of Eden, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. You don't think their scholars read that? You don't think they know that the Lord that they said that? The Lord said he's not going to turn away the punishment thereof? So you're going to pay for every ounce of things that you've done, man. Can I say this? Go ahead. <clears throat> if Eden's done away with, why is that scripture right? right? Who's that written for? <laughs> Who's that written for? Give me Obadiah 1 and 10. Who is that written for? Go ahead. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. Perfect. And did pursue his brother with the sword. And that pursuit, that pursuit continues to this very day as we stand here living and breathing, man. So the spirit of the Lord. That pursuit continues. Because the scripture says what? He's gonna be like madmen, sparing none. That hasn't happened yet. That's coming upon us, man. Because he did pursue his brother. That has not happened yet. Now hold that. Give me Obadiah 1 and 10, because it links up right with what he's reading. It's Obadiah 1 and 10. It says, For, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, yep. and thou shalt be cut off forever. You see that? For the violence against thy brother Jacob, whom we are, shame is going to cover you. The key word in that phrase, in that scripture, in that paragraph is, for the violence, the violence, the shit that you've done unto us. You got Esau talking about, oh, that was old, that was, just let it go. And, and, and you, and so much so, you even got our own people talking about, we here as, as brothers, as Israelites, we need to stop using the so-called white man as a crutch. So much so that the, that's what the, oh, you gotta start using the white man as a crutch. It's not that we're using him as a crutch. His wickedness and his deeds, the shit that he's done to the North American Indians, right? He slaughtered the North American Indians. He raped, robbed the camps. He went out and killed all the buffalo. He, he broke every treaty he has ever made with them, and that's the, that's not even the tip of the iceberg. And you say we're using him as a crutch? No, we're pointing out this devil's wickedness, man. That's right. We're pointing out this. They want to talk about out. They want to talk about the shit that we've done. We rob, we steal, we sell drugs. They, they that's all throughout the world. Every time a nation of people comes to America. They come to these big cities and they want to see the black people sitting on corners. They want to see all that. It's an attraction to them. We've always been an attraction to these devils when they come from these foreign countries, man. We've always been that way. All right? But the time is coming. The time is at hand where the Lord is now raising his people up. All right? We're not going to be sitting down talking about, yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, no problem, sir. That shit is done. That shit is absolutely done. All right? Hold, hold, hold that. I know you itching, brother. I know you itching. Go ahead, brother. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity. He cast off all pity. He didn't give a goddamn how you felt or what was inflicted, what kind of pain was inflicted on you. He didn't give a shit if you was fucking bleeding, your skull was beaten wide open. Go look at that book with, uh, without sanctuary. Go, 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 look at the, go look at the book without sanctuary, okay? And look at the pictures that they've done to our people. Go Google the book without sanctuary and look at those pictures. Because he had no pity upon us. He didn't give a goddamn what kind of condition he left us in when he got through whooping our ass. He didn't give a shit what he did to little black men, little black kids like Emmett Till. He had no pity. They rejoiced at the fall of the righteous. And now that now nobody should pay for that? Nobody, nobody knows where it's coming from. Nobody knows why these people here are angry. Really? No, we shouldn't be angry. We don't have a right to be angry. But when them goddamn, speaking of today, when them so-called towers came down, he saw you eat them out to a fucking, you were furious, man. And you're the ones who put, brought the towers down. Just ask your elitist, man. You got your boy Buzz Light, not uh, Buzz Light yet. <laughs> Buzz Aldridge, what's his name? Buzz Aldridge. 
You got Buzz Aldrin coming out talking about they never went to the moon, man. But that's what happens with these elders. When people get into that elderly realm and that dementia starts, they start telling the truth. You know? With all that being said, you left no pity upon us, man. Go ahead. And his anger did tear perpetually. Perfect. His anger did tear perpetually. Just look at when they got them goddamn dogs on Jake, man. You got Jake's, if you see some of these videos, you got a fucking Jake sitting there on the ground with his hands, this, that, and the third, not even moving. These devils will come over with the dog and let the dog just rip them apart, man. No pity, man. No mercy, no compassion. And you wonder why black people are fucking angry with the way you fucking treat people, man. You wonder why. Some old bullshit, go ahead. And he kept his wrath forever. And that's why you still see what you see today. And this is how we know that the Edomites still exist on the planet today. Right. Right, Just look at the comparison of what's happening with the two people, the blacks and the whites, man. Look at the comparison. They ring and sound to a T exactly what the scripture says, man. You held your, 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 your contempt and your negativity forever, man. For fucking ever, all right? But be that as it may, the time has come. But this shit ain't gonna, we ain't gonna stand for this shit no more. That's why you think, why you think these devils are armed up with so many goddamn bullets and guns and ammunition? Because they know there's gonna be a rise, Kwam Yashar Allah, they know there's gonna be a rise of the so-called black man, of the so-called Puerto Rican man, of the so-called Native American man, as the scripture says, man. As the scripture says. Look at look at what it says when you read about the, the gad is a truth that overcome them. But they're gonna rise up at the last, man. So our people, are, the Lord is putting the courage on our people to rise up. And you ain't gonna be able to do a goddamn thing to stop it. Go ahead, brother. The book of Psalms, chapter uh, 149, verse five. Perfect, perfect. Let the saints be joyful in Matter glory. Matter of fact, we that from the top, brother. Uh, we that from the top. It's verse one. Praise ye, Yahweh, about Shem Yahweh Shah. Sing unto Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai a new song right. and his praises in the congregation of saints. Right. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Perfect. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Go ahead. Let them praise to his name in the, the dance. Yep. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Go ahead. For Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai taketh pleasure in his people. You see that? The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. Don't try to wiggle and squeeze and give us this nonsense that you become a, a spiritual Israelite. Because you got these Christians who read the scriptures and clearly see and understand that the Lord is coming and is only for the nation of Israel. So now the Christian man wants to mix and mingle himself as a spiritual Israelite. They'll tell you, we're all Israel now. We're all Israel. Show me that in the scriptures where it says we're all Israel. Go ahead. He will beautify the meat with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Yep. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth yep. and the two-edged sword in their hands. That's right. And what do you do with a two-edged sword? Go ahead. To execute, execute. vengeance. That's what you do with a two-edged sword. Vengeance. To execute vengeance. What is this? So, <laughs> to execute vengeance. Go ahead. Upon the heathen. Upon the heathen. All you other nations, including Esau, Edom, we're going to execute vengeance upon you for the for the atrocities that you've done unto the Lord's people. And the Lord is going to give us that power to do so, man. That's right. To execute vengeance upon the people, upon you heathens. Go ahead. That's right. And punishment upon the people. And punishment upon the people. So any and everybody outside of the nation of Israel, you got a fucking bad thing coming for you, man. By the hand of our people Israel. You got a bad thing coming for you. Go ahead. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So you elites of the world, like I said earlier, you don't think they put their top scholars on this? Why do you think they're digging down in the dirt? Why do you think they're trying to go up into space, man? They're trying to avoid that ass whooping that's coming to them that's by right. the Israelites, that's right. man. That's, right. that's, right. that's why you're doing all these things. Right. If, he saw, if he didn't give a shit, he wouldn't be building no goddamn space station. He wouldn't be building no goddamn bunker in the fucking earth, in the crust of the rock. He wouldn't be doing that. Why? Because he knows he'd be so strong. But he knows that the Lord is going to be our power. The spirit of the Lord is going to be upon us. So when we come to visit your ass, we're going to execute vengeance upon you with a two-edged sword in our hand. That's what the Lord has in store for you. 
by his people Israel, oh. by the hand of his people Israel. That's right. That's right. So it's not going to be nothing but, oh, that's just freak. No, it's going to be literal. We're going to grab a hold of you and wring your goddamn necks, man. Choke you out. Go ahead, let this brother finish yeah, off. Well, nice to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise he, Yahweh Shem You see that? To execute judgment. Everything that's written is going to come to pass. All right, we ain't fooling around out here no more, man. We out here and we mean God, we mean goddamn business, man. And we got to wait upon the Lord. There's many times where you want to go and crack a crack over the head and just bash him just to see him bleed like, there's plenty of times you feel that way. You know, and just by the spirit route, you getting riled up in the spirit. You'll see some shit, you're like, I want to bust this motherfucker. But we got to wait upon the Lord, man. All right, so let's go right here, let's go. This is Jeremiah 16 and 16, behold, I was sent for many fishers, right. and the Lord, and they shall fish them. Right, so spiritually we're fishing right now. We are spiritually fishing. We throw the net out there. We ain't fishing with a fishing rod and a hook and a goddamn worm. We fishing with a net, all right? And this scripture is the net that we're throwing out there. We throw them scriptures out there. We throw the word out there. We wheel them in. And anything that's bad, we take, we throw it to the wayside. Oh, that's a hand mic. Oh, that's a eating mic. Nope, that's the one you know. And once again, we judge by the, how the spirit gives us the ability to judge. Ah, no, that's a eating mic. That's a hand mic. No, 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 that's a hand mic. Get him out of here. You know, oh, that's an Israelite. That brother, you know, he's going to keep coming back. He's going to get fed. And the Lord will, and the Lord build him up. The Lord put the spirit on him to understand. And the Lord, you know, continue to increase him in learning, man. Go ahead. And after I will, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, perfect, and, and, and from every hill, yep. and from out of the holes of the rocks. Right. So we're gonna do. We're gonna take business. We're gonna take care of business down here on the earth, and the angels are gonna take business care of business down there up in the goddamn space stations, man. So we got the Lord got this whole thing covered, man. It's all set. We're gonna be like. We're gonna be like lions. We gonna. The Lord's gonna put us on the earth like goddamn lions. But we're gonna go through, man. Right. We're gonna go through. We're gonna do it righteously, man. It's gonna be done with righteousness. All right. You up? Who, who, you on deck? Oh, it's on you, brother. It's on you. Psalm 58 and 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he see of the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. He shall wash his feet in the blood. That's gonna be literal, man. We're gonna be stomping in blood. We're gonna be, listen, man. Listen, listen. Don't think it's far-fetched what we're talking about, all right? Even now, even as men who are on the highways and byways and we're speaking these things, sometimes some of these things you'd be like, damn, I'm really going to smash a little baby against the stones? You know, you got to be in the spirit of the Lord to do that. You got to be, I mean, we talk a lot of shit sometimes, but at the end of the day, you got to be in the spirit of the Lord. Even even when you, like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a me personally, I don't like to see children being abused. I don't like that shit. That's just me. But when that time comes, and the Lord said we're gonna take them back, them little ones against the stones, I'm not Lord willing, He gave me the spirit. I'm not holding back. I'm not holding back because who knows where that little spirit is has done throughout the world, man. That spirit in that, in that little baby. Don't look at the baby for the outside appearance. It's the spirit that's in this baby that the Lord is setting you up to that's take right. it out. Smash them against the goddamn stones, man. Because most likely that baby, that spirit, had done it to one of us at some time in the past, man. Exactly. And now you want to sit there and be, oh no, 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 it's a bad, no, it's a bad. Fuck that. If the Lord, the Lord said, curse be he that hold back, back his sword from blood. Yep. All right. So the time is coming when the Lord is raising us up, and you start, you gotta get that. We've been saying this from the head of folks on down. They've been saying it. You gotta get that ruling, that ruling leadership mentality, man. You have to get it in you. You ain't gonna be able to walk around here and just try to be some get along to go along type nigga. You can't, it's not gonna work, man. It's gonna be a matter of life and death out here. It's gonna be a matter of survival out here, man. Go ahead. I got two pieces of all Bring them up. Now, this is our first. <laughs> These are first precepts. Is that go after the one? One chicken, not two chickens. <laughs> That's what my coach used to say. I play ball. My coach said, you know, you know how niggas are. We, we go to the mess hall, you know, niggas be taking two or three pieces of chicken. And that coach came in like, what y'all doing up in here? Y'all supposed to take one chicken, not two chickens. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. He's, uh, that, uh, this is the first He's one. He's Jake, too. <laughs> um, 
Zachariah Zach 1 and 15. And he says, I am very sore to speak of the heathen that are at ease. Right. And, and hold on. And a lot of these heathen are at ease, man. Yeah. They walking around like they had no, they got no fault, man. They walk around like they got clean hands and no blood on their hands. Walking around just like, eh, go ahead. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. And they helped forward the affliction. That's exactly what they did. The Arabs, they was involved, but they walk around here like they have no knowledge of what happened with the slave trade and, and, and the white man being involved. They act like they got no head, no, no, no dirt in this game, man. Go ahead. And he said, it's got chapter 25, verse 14. And he says, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. Again. He's gonna lay vengeance but on Edom by the hand of his people Israel. Let's keep let's keep it clear now. Let's keep it clear. This is a future prophecy. Okay? We haven't the, the we haven't the children of Israel in this point in time have not had the opportunity to lay their hands upon you, devil man. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is setting it up. He's slowly but surely setting it up. He's strategically putting us in position. He's putting us in that position to grab hold of you. Go ahead. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger. See that? According to his anger. So when the time comes, when you get that little Edomite baby, you're going to have to do according to the Lord's anger. Smash that little shit against the stones, man. Smash him against the stones. You know, when I first read that, I was like, whoa, damn. You know? And then when you bring it out to people, oh, what Bible are you reading? What Bible is that? The Lord wouldn't do that. Well, why wouldn't he? We went through it. You devils and tore the tore to shreds, man. Literally. You devils literally tore our people to fucking shreds, man. And I and I and I and I'll go back to that book without sanctuary. Because that gives you a clear insight of how these devils operated back then and continually do so now. Down in Texas, they here here it is in this was it 21st century, 20, 21st century, they dragging niggas by in the back of trucks. Yeah. Well, they still dragging there. niggas in the back of trucks. And hanging people off in trees. Nigga jogging, nigga jogging through a neighborhood looking at an abandoned house, just checking out the layout. These niggas chase him down and gun him down with a shotgun. I'm talking about we knew he was up to something. <laughs> nigga ain't had no fucking, had no tools with him. He's fucking running, jogging and sweating. Didn't have a goddamn uh, a coat hanger to, you know, niggas use coat hangers to, to get the car open. And he, he, nigga didn't have none. But these crackers going summons up the posse, Shoot the nigga dead, man. So don't give me no bullshit about oh the so-called white man. You niggas, you devils aren't innocent, man. You got blood. Armand Aubrey was his name, right? Yeah. You devils got blood all over your hands, man. All on your face, the whole shit. You you you, you fucking southern. You covered in blood, man. Even the old head too. Of course, that's what the that's what the, that's what the scripture yeah. says. Um, and jokes. Yeah, the old the old sins you. That's right. If I may have two elder. You know, it was not too long ago, I think it was maybe a few months back or last year, where, where they found a, a Judite woman in her 60s and 70s hang on a tree. Yes. And, and, and they said in the police report that she committed suicide. How the hell does a woman have the strength and, and, and her own old age to fix a walk, climb on a tree, and then drop herself down? Jake, say, ready, man. Yeah. This devil's gonna get a hold of your ass, man. Yeah. You're, you niggas is out of here. Go ahead. Elder Man, the back, you come this November, slavery is on the ballot in Oregon and four other states. So niggas are going into the booth to vote if they want to bring slavery the back. They're going to the booth. You see? You niggas think you're free? This devil's going to be like a madman, man. He's putting, he's putting, the, he's putting the, 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 the writing, the ink. The ink is still hot on the paper, man. You niggas are going back into slavery, man. You niggas are going back into slavery here in America. You know? Uh, let me finish off right here. He says, and uh, they shall do an eat them according to my anger. Hold on real quick, Slocky. What article was that? This was from... um. News One, uh, Oregon Capitol. Can, can, can you read a little bit of that, Bubba Kasha? All right, this is from uh, because this is this is this is news that you people need to be aware of. You think this devil's sitting there talking about you know we're gonna give you you know forty acres and a mule and you saw it's good to me and all this other shit. We had a nigga that just come out here. He was out here talking about you saw the devil this that and the third. The minute that nigga got his fucking section eight and his goddamn food stamps, white man's good to me. It's all good to me. Yeah. Nigga disappeared. We ain't seen him. Every now and then we see him buzz by on his bike. Go ahead. Con, USA Today has one, but I'm going to go to the Yahoo one. It says right here that uh, I just had it. So, listen okay. Up, listen up. 
I'll click on the USA Today when it says abortion, slavery, and marijuana. Here are the ballot questions to watch in the 2022 midterms. Can you believe that shit? Abortion, slavery, and what else? Um, and marijuana. Oh, marijuana. Abortion, slavery, and marijuana is now going to be on a ballot for people to vote on. Okay. So if you walking down the street, nigga, you ain't got your credentials, you going into slavery. You going into slavery. You ain't got your chip, you going into slavery. Go ahead. Connor says right here, um, out outlawing slavery and indentured servitude is a re um friendom in five states as well. Con. And it says right here, uh let me get down to it. Deal with me. Um votes in Alabama, Louisiana, Oregon, and this is from USA Today. Tennessee and Vermont will will decide whether to abolish slavery as a part of a larger criminal justice reform movement so aimed at prison still labor. Books, man. Slavery still on the books. Yeah, you cannot abolish something if it's, if it's not on the books. Right. It has right. to be on the books. Yeah. Yeah. Abolish it. Not to abolish it. All right. We're going Con, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Man, I was yep. going to say that the 13th Amendment. Yep. You know, when you're locked up, you become a, 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 a slave of the yep. state. I write on that. I write on the But all in all, all in all, you see what's going on here, right? You see what's going on here. These devils, they, listen, they did it to the Japanese, they did it to the Chinese. They're going to do it to you niggas on, the, on, a, on a high scale level. What mm -hmm. do you think Project Megiddo is all about? The Alfred plan. What do you think that is about? Rex 84. What do you think all these things are about, man? It's all about the children of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Israel, that's what it's all about, okay? It's all about you. We've told you, we've admonished you, we've given you instruction, we're bringing it out, we're on the highs and byways, putting our lives on the line to, to give you the information that the Lord gave us to give to you. Whether you hear, whether you forbid, that's going to determine on you, man. That's going to determine on you. All right, where we at? I said, that's what all yeah, those um, the FEMA camps is for. Yeah, yeah. Say, FEMA camps, the, the FEMA co the coffins, all them goddamn coffins that got strewn throughout the country. You think they're going to fucking put flowers in them goddamn things? That's stuff three or four niggas in there at once, man. And put you in an incinerator. Look at some of these places where the barbed wire fence, usually <clears throat> when you got some type of establishment, the barbed wire fence is facing outward so somebody can't get in. But in these, in these concentration camps and all these holding facilities, the barbed wire is facing inwards, so you can't get out. See? You walk fucking gates, you know, 20 feet high, fucking all kinds of coil barbed wire up on that shit. You motherfuckers, you, you people about to really die out here, man. Go ahead. Now, this is um, Psalm 83, verse 2. I'm going to start verse 2. And he says, For law, thy enemy make a tumor, right. and dead thy head, thee have lifted up the head. That's right. Now they're awake, man. Now they're awake. These devils are ready to make a move. It's about to happen, man. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you wake up and all of a sudden you go to get some fucking gas and you put your card in that thing and it don't work. Then you're gonna be like, oh shit, now what? It's don't. It's gonna. It's gonna be too late, man. You're gonna be scrambling around. You might be stuck right where you goddamn stand, man. You might get in your car, drive about 60, 70 miles away from your home, only to find out you ain't got no no means of cash or no means of money, man. And these devils are gonna be like, oh, you fucking. Doing some more fraudulent shit. Come with us, sir. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Good. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Right, so if you want to consider yourselves an African American or some kind of Kemet and all this other shit, go right ahead, man. Go right ahead. You do just that. Because at the end of the day, Esau knows who you are, man. Just because you don't know who you are, that don't mean the so-called white man don't know who you are. So you're gonna get hemmed up with the rest of them niggas out there in them same concentration camps. We go, what do you think you're gonna go in a concentration camp talking about I I an Israelite, I'm an African American, or I'm, 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 I'm Hotep, I'm Hotep and all this other bullshit? They're gonna be like, oh, 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 we're sorry, we're sorry, right this way, sir. Hotep, Hotep, he's all right. He's all right. Get out of here, man. You devil's going, you gonna find out before rude awakening. You talking about you want you want your your, your pharaoh to come. What was that nigga's name? That nigga with that big shot. Shaka almost. Yeah, he, that, that nigga Shaka almost sing the song, he had a rap song. He's like, Pharaoh! <laughs> that shit was hilarious, man. 
Shit screaming, screaming for fucking Pharaoh. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Yeah, the song you had. This is it, Pharaoh. People are fucking crazy, man. Our people are out of their goddamn minds, man. Y'all don't worship Kimmy. Right. Crazy. Pharaoh. You gonna be in no concert? Y'all gonna be in the concentration camp in the corner, Pharaoh. You gonna see Pharaoh coming down with a I know. Go to your God. Go to your God. That's right. They gonna see Pharaoh coming down, descending. Yeah, man. Y'all, y'all finished, man. You are finished. Everybody want to be Israelite for the all people, man. Right. Well, they're gonna want to be Israelite when that time comes. When that time comes, they see they see the power that the Lord bestows upon us, and they see that we, you know, we're, we're, we're those men. They're gonna be like, I'm an Israelite too. I'm an Israelite. I'm, I always knew. I always believed. Too late. Too late. Go ahead. Uh, Judges chapter ten, verse thirteen. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Yep, and that's exactly what you people have done. And, and even in your ignorance, okay? Because we all have been in ignorance at one point, all right? But it, it comes a point in time when you hear the word of Yahweh Shai and it resonates with your spirit and it brings you to mind of things that you once knew, okay? But if you choose, I don't, if you choose or you refuse to receive it, that's because the Lord has blinded you, and you was never any of His. You see, and that's the that's the damning of, damning thing about it. When all hell starts breaking loose, you're gonna be asking yourself, "Why am I in this position?" The only the only conclusion you could come to is that the Lord didn't want you. The Lord did not receive you. So when Esau's about to line you up for that guillotine and come over and crack that crack your damn skull open with the butt of that gun, that's the, that's your answer. You know, you, you, you're gonna be in line. You're gonna see a nigga in front of you get his head cracked open like dang. Only you said the Lord didn't want me in this kingdom. I am in this time, right? I guess. You know? Alright, let's run. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto your gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Pharaoh shot the utmost. You know, all these five percent, all these people, man, Jesus. go and go and worship your, go and worship the God that you trusted, right? Go and worship those individuals. You know, wooden stone and cobblestones, whatever it is, you know, statues, whatever you got, go and worship those things because that shit is going, is going to be your 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 hope in that day. All right, so where we're up. Isaiah chapter thirty-one, verse one. Woe to them that go down into Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Right, when that time comes, you're going to see the strength that Esau has and you're just going to submit yourself. You're going to submit yourself because first and foremost, you have no strength, no courage in you. Your spirit is going to be, the scripture say, who shall rouse him up? I'm talking about Judah. All you Israelites out there, you ain't gonna have no might. You're gonna see the shit that he's gonna be doing, and it's gonna make you weak, man. It's gonna make you weak spiritually, it's gonna make you weak physically, and it's gonna submit yourself to him. Right? And that's where they're gonna get you, man. But we of the hope for the left, we're gonna trust in the Lord. That's why we read uh uh the Maccabees brothers. We that's why we was we were set up to read these things. Because when that time comes and these devils start coming down just like that. We gonna be manful enough to be like fuck it. You gonna take me, take me, take me out. But the majority of you Jake's gonna be like, no, I don't wanna die. Please, please, you know, don't please, I'll do whatever you say. Fuck that, man. Being being a part of this thing is beautiful. Because whether you survive or whether you get taken out, you belong to the Lord, man. He gonna raise you up at the first, or he's gonna give you the opportunity to see this place be destroyed, man. It's all beautiful, man. Go ahead. I'm going to get right, right, right to the point to back that, brother. Isaiah 30 and 3. Therefore, show the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. That's right. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your That's confusion. Right. Trust in the shadow of this place, Babylon, America, Egypt, Sodom and Gomorrah. It is your confusion. You have no idea what the hell's going on out here, man. And they put it that way and they make it that way to keep you in the dark, to keep you blind, to keep you dumb, dumbed down. So you trust in this place wholeheartedly that this place is going to all miraculously bounce back and give you the opportunity to live a great life here in Babylon. You motherfuckers are still looking for a white picket fence and a dog and all this other shit, man. 
It's over, man. The ride is over. All right, go ahead, bro. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 1. For great are thy judgments and cannot be expressed. Right. Therefore, uh, unordered souls have erred. For when unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation, mm -hmm. they being shut up in their houses, the prisoners of darkness, and fettered with bonds of a long night, laid there in exile from the external provinces. Mm -hmm. For while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness, being horribly astonished and troubled with strange aberrations. Mm -hmm. For neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear, but noise as waters falling down sounded above them, mm -hmm. and sad visions appeared unto them with heavy continents. The power of the fire might give them light, neither could the bright flames of the stars endure the light that horrible night. Right, those strange apparitions, they're gonna be plagued, man. Those gonna plague these devils with all kinds of different type of dreams, all types of visions. That's what's gonna happen to these people. Now, when you when we read that, when I read that, it brings me back to that movie, um, The Fourth Kind. The Fourth Kind. Yep. When you read that movie, The Fourth Kind, because it was that same, it was that same, you know, similarity as what the scripture was saying. How this woman, she was a psychiatrist, she was supposed to be helping people, but she was being plagued her damn self. All right, and those strange apparitions. She got snatched up out of. I mean, that was a that was a pretty good movie, man. You probably you've seen the and, same owl by the window all right, the time. All that cinnamon, that putrid <laughs> cinnamon smell. That even, even my son. I don't know if your brother saw that. Yeah. But um, at the end of the movie, this woman, she was from Massachusetts, I believe. And um, they said that the language they tried to chalk it up to some African language, but that shit was Hebrew, man. Yep. That shit was Hebrew. That's right. Yep, and they, and they kind of blank. You know what's crazy about yeah, they that? They chopped it up. They, they chopped it, it up. They cut it with an actual tape of the book. Right, right. And they, they, they said words and blanked out words. Why? It was on. It was the audio was. They couldn't. Uh, um, they couldn't make it out or whatever, yeah, which is bullshit. Yeah. But you know, but they, it did read yeah, something, something, something. My people. Ba ba ba, you know. So check that movie out, man. America's gonna be destroyed, by the way. America oh, and yeah. that flag is gonna be destroyed. That's right. That's right. Going down a tube, baby. Get down the tube. How do you feel about that? I live on the street, people. My oh, man, I hear you. It, but but let me say this to you, right? Let me say I this to you. But let me let me say this to you, though. You're gonna be made. Listen, listen. Let me say this to you. You're going to be made a man of 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 desire, I should say, because you know how to survive out here. You got you got you do. You know how to survive out here. You know how to will and deal. That's what it's gonna be coming to. People are gonna be looking at you for help on how to survive out here. These people that live in these high rises, drive these fancy fast cars, you watch, you you watch. They look down on me every night. Of course they do. But when all hell at you. But, but check it out. Of course they do. But check this out though. When, 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 the, when, the, when the dollar collapse and the food sources stop and electricity is no more, who are they gonna look to? They're gonna ask you, how did you do it? How, help us, how? And you're gonna tell them, fuck you. Kiss my ass, demon. That's my, that's my advice to you. Tell them, fuck you. See that? That's fuck right. you. Hey, hey, I know it's supposed to be God. Listen, love, love the scripture, the scripture says, seeing is a righteous thing to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Right. When, 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 right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there was one day you could, they could have spared a couple dollars to help your cause. Don't give you a dime, man. Somebody got a couple dollars, get us, brother, man. I gotta go take. Yeah, that's all right. Anybody get a brother a couple dollars? I don't got the cash on me. But get that man a couple dollars, man. Hold on, my man gonna give you a couple. No, 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 no. Just, no, no. Give him a couple dollars, man. I, I know you don't want I it, but you go, to go but to take, it. take it, take it, take it, take it. No, I wanted to go to somebody. Don't worry else. about it. Don't worry about it. It's gonna go to you. It's gonna go to you. It's gonna go to you. No, for real. You for go. real. It's gonna go to you. I'm gonna give it to somebody else. Well, well do what you gotta do, but get yourself, get yourself a coffee. How about that? How about that? Get yourself a coffee. You may be get you a slice from Sal's or something too. But you're right about it. Of course. course. Don't smile. I know, I know. Don't but they once don't again, care. they don't care. care. But you gonna you gonna be you gonna be a, a prime uh, candidate out here when that time comes. They're gonna be looking for you to figure out ask you how you've done it. Alright? So let's go. Let me get on. where we at? Go ahead. First one is secret for you. 
What are you reading right now? The scriptures, the scriptures. No, Let's not get carried away. Let's no, not get I carried away now. I love scripture. Okay, we're reading the, the King James Bible. All right. All right. First, okay, Peter, Peter chapter I'm five, verse eight. eight. Yep. These some Peter, of you, Michael Allah, Michael Allah. Can you get the comment board? I want to get some of these comments from the sure, brothers. Sure, We're going to sure. wrap it up. It's over because of it because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks, walks about, about seeking whom he may devour. All right, so the scripture says, be sober, be vigilant. All right? Be sober and be vigilant. And it's not talking about a physical sober where you've been drinking. All right? Being sober in your mind and being vigilant on top of what's happening. Being circumspect because there's about to be a massive move on the children of Israel. All right? There's about to be a massive insurrection on the children of Israel, primarily you, those who believe on the Lord, all right? So being sober, being vigilant, is now the time to really take focus on what's going on out here. That's right. Paying attention to everything that they do, to everything that they say, because these devils get slick with their semantics. They'll say something, but in the depths of that sentence or that conversation, they'll point out or make, make mention of what they got planned for you. Go ahead, read that comments, bro. Now, this is, now, this is from Judah the Prince. And he says, Revelation 12, 12, Therefore we judge ye heaven, yep. and ye that dwell in them. Yep. Watch the inhabit of the earth and of the sea, yep. for the devils come you down left. unto you, having great wrath, because he know that he have but a short time. Right. He know that he have but a short time. And he locked you, see? Yeah, he locked you, yeah. Know him that he have but a short time. He lives inside the car. I just seen him walk up. He's inside the car. He's a He's in there. There's, 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 light, the light right now, he can't go nowhere. But anyway, he, read it again. And then he says, oh, uh, Revelation 12, 12, Therefore rejoice ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them. Right. Walk to the inhabitant of the earth and of the sea, right. for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Why? Because he knows that it have but a short time. You don't think he put his scholars on this? You don't think they know they have that short time? That's why they're starting to move quickly. That's why things are speeding up because they know there's a short time because they know the Lord is on his way right. And the thing that they know Likewise the same thing we know is the fact that we don't know what time the Lord is coming man We know he's coming. We can't give you an exact date. We can't give you an exact time Esau's on that very same timeline we're on We're waiting upon the Lord now so therefore he has to work feverishly now To try to wipe us out before the Lord gets back here so the Lord will not be able to take up his hope, his hope for the elect, man. And that's what these devils are going to try to do. All right, go ahead, read some more. And then this is from the, um, uh, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Go ahead. And, um, and he says, 2 Peter 3 and 12, looking for our, oh, so lucky, looking for, for and hasten until the coming of the day of Yahweh, when in the heaven being a fire shall be dissolved, yep. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right. And he says in, uh, um, Nehemiah 3 and 19, there is no healing of that brood, that wound is grievous. All that hear the brood of thee shall clap the hand over thee, That's right. for upon whom have not that wickedness passed continually. That's right. All right, read some more. And he says in um, Job 14 and 5. Look at him, look at him. They're trying to push this shit, yo. Yeah, the dude took away the key, bro. Yeah, That's why I said the dude ran. Look at, look at Esau. Look at Esau. Is that a Jake and they're driving that thing? Yeah. And he has like that red. He's like valet. He, he don't have the key, so he won't start. Oh, they ready to fuck him up. They ready to pull that nigga out of there. And remember when you said you seen the dude lock the door? Yeah. Yeah. Dude was like, Money robbing? Yeah, this is what goes on out here in these streets. There's a mob. There's going to be a mob on this nigga. There's a Jake, there's a Jake up in that car. I don't know, somebody may have stolen the key, but he got traffic all backed up. And let me tell you something. If this was that time period, they would have had that nigga outside that car <laughs> whooping his ass. They've been whooping his ass. Oh, I got, I got a good one for All you. Right, let's get it, brother. Now, this is um, from Strike for the Mastery 144. It says, Luke 22 31. And Yahweh Bashmiyahu Shai said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Right. Verse 32. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. All right. And that's another thing you gotta stay focused. You gotta pray to the Lord that the Lord keep you focused, man. Keep you keep your mind single. All right? Go ahead. But I have prayed, but I have prayed for thee, and um, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fell not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Right. Now I'll convert and strengthen thy brother. And that's what we do out here. The scriptures speak about iron sharpened iron. All right. So we're telling you, brothers, and, and, and you brothers are telling us likewise, you know, we gotta be prepared. 
We gotta trust in the Lord. We gotta keep our minds ready, man. We gotta have that rulership mentality. All right, we gotta keep that warrior spirit on us. All right, it's not about going out there and trying to bash Esau at this point in time, but just keep that warrior spirit on you because when the time comes, you just don't know who's gonna to try to run up on you. You just don't know who's gonna to try to make a move on you. All right, so you gotta be ready at all times. You know, and another thing, I'm, I'm a big, I'm, listen, I'm a big advocate, man. You brothers, stop wearing the goddamn flip flops out there. You know, brothers want to go to the store with them little fucking basketball, what y'all call them, basketball shoes? Slides. Yeah. Slides. Y'all yeah. gonna get caught out there, man. Just just for the mere fact, you there may, they, they may be nothing going on, but you don't know. You may get out there to the store with them fucking flip flops on and it might run up on you, man. You fucking slipping around and shit, fucking socks and you know? Just be ready, man. Be on the fucking ready every minute, every hour of the day. Can't can't stress it anymore, man. The time is coming where you're gonna we're gonna start seeing shit pop off. All right. All right. Let's now, yeah, go ahead, brother. This, this is the one more. Yeah. The last one. So, um, um, Judah, the last one, Judah, the prince, Revelation three ten, because thou because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Right. I, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Right. And this is what we pray that the Lord keep us from the hour of temptation. We know that that time is coming. Where we're gonna start rounding people up and sticking you with that shit, man. They're gonna start putting that shit in people. All right. So may your how about me shine protect all of us brothers who are faithful and true and truly believe. All right. Go ahead. We shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right. And we know what's coming upon all the world. MOTB is coming upon all the world. And there's no stopping that thing, man. There's no stopping. It. It's no more a conspiracy, okay? It's no more conspiracy theory where the the, he, the black Hebrew Israelites think that they're gonna try to stick a chip in you, all right? These devils are making it known, all right? I've been doing videos about the, the, that, that, that uh, the, the government, World Government Council Summit, Alex, and she talks about, Pepper Grundren talks about that new method of currency. She said, we're about to abandon the old rule of currency and implement a new one, digital, all right? So that time is coming, all right? So Lord willing, y'all brothers, brothers and sisters were edified. Shalom to the brothers on our comment boards. It's lucky we didn't get to everybody's comment, but they're much appreciated because, you know, we go live, everybody's watching, everybody's reading, and may the spirit continue to be with you brothers and sisters out there who truly believe in this thing of ours, all right? So with that, we'll give our praise to Yahweh. And with that, we want to say double honor to the head of Apostle Great Millstone. Shalom off to all the men laboring in truth and sincerity on the highways and byways and the sit-down lessons in the brotherhood, as the scriptures say, the Psalms, that, you know, let the brotherhood continue, man. Let the brotherhood reign continue. All right, so with that, we're going to say ba 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 ba